guitarist, guitarist, guitarist. So welcome to tonight's episode of Make Some Noise. We have something different. We have actually organizers of music festivals, which is that we haven't actually had anything of this nature on before. So this is the very first. And before we get too carried away, please like and subscribe. I might go to the top trouble of doing this before. So YouTube, please subscribe. And this show is called Make Some Noise. So if you've got any other ideas, please let me know that you need some noise being made about. So tonight we have some festival organizers. So here we go. We'll bring them in. We have Vanessa. Good evening. Hey. Anthony, Glenn, and Terry. Good day. How are we? And we're still missing one, but that's okay. He'll jump on in a sec. So, um, so first up, we'll have Vanessa. Here we go. You want to hey, say guys. who? You know what you're doing? I do. Well, I think a lot of people know who I am from a couple of uh, things that I've been doing recently. But if you don't, I'm Vanessa and I'm originally from the Mid-North Coast down there in Maxville. And I, um, I'm the organiser of the Maxville Music Muster, also a uh, country music artist as well out there, like promoting great country music. So that's me and that's what I do. And I'm actually living in Gympie at the moment. So there you go. <laughs> awesome. And we got uh, Anne says, hey, Vanessa. And we'll go to Anthony right now. Here we go, Anthony. How you going, sir? Hey, guys. How you going? Thanks for thanks for having us on. I'm Anthony all the way from Shepparton, Victoria. And uh, our branding wow. is Festivals on the Murray. And we cover Korowa, Mawala and Tulibuck is our wow. country music side of it. That's amazing. All the way to Victoria. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Cool. All right, and we'll go to Glenn. Here we go, Glenn. G'day all, and uh, yeah, thanks for having us on, Doug. Um, That's okay. Um, yeah, my name's Glenn Albrecht. I'm the organiser um, for the for the Kenmore Park Music Muster up here in Queensland at, at Lower Wonga, just about fifteen k uh, northwest of uh, of Gimby on my own property. A little property up here, 135 acres, and and very picturesque little place, and perfect for vans. So, um, yeah, we've had a couple of couple of musters up here, and as well as that, I'm, I'm been uh, playing um, music in bands and doing well solo, a little little short stint of solo stuff in the late 90s uh, yep. for a couple okay, of years, cool. and uh, yeah. So um, okay. and band stuff. So I've been in the game a little while. Very good. And we'll cut to Terry. Hey, Terry. Hello, folk. Uh, I'm Terry, as you just said. I'm a country music entertainer and promoter of the Clarence Valley Muster that you can probably see a poster that's over my shoulder. Sadly, we had to cancel this year. So uh, I'm looking forward to this little chat. Yeah, yeah, cool. So <coughs> which, which part of the country are you from again? It's the, I'm from the Gold Coast. But uh, wow, awesome. we run the Clarence Valley Muster at near Grafton. Awesome. Fantastic. And we were just going to have Rob pop on now. Here we go, Rob. Hey, Rob. Hey, Doug. How are you going? Doug. Yes, I can really see. You might have myself. to speak. You might have to lift your microphone up to your mouth a little bit so we can get you on there. Is that any better? Uh, yeah, it, we can hear you. But, yeah, what, what festivals do you run, Rob? Well, as, as far as actually running them, mate, I, I, I don't run too many but I, I have um i'm heavily involved in in, in several um the gunnadar and I, I i i'm involved with sound systems and you wouldn't believe it i'm having trouble so much trouble with this sound <laughs> anyway, that's, that's how it rolls um you gotta love technology <laughs> no, you just gotta love it it's um i'm new to all this iphone stuff so um it's all trial and error as you can imagine yeah okay and uh, oh, okay, thank you very much for the intro. So, if we just bring everyone back, so everyone that's watching, please, I really suck at multitasking. So, please uh, share this too. This is really, really good info tonight because this is the platform where the mus musicians get to do their things. So, probably first up, if we quickly go around again, I'd be really interested to know if it's if these are private festivals or are they like you know government endorsed festivals? So, maybe Vanessa, do you want to? Go first. Yeah, sure. No worries. Well, uh, Maxwell Music Muster is pretty much run as a private festival, pretty much me, and uh, that's about it. Like, 
yeah. Um, I have a, a team of volunteers behind me that uh, this year that came on board and supported it and we had a fantastic – we were actually the last festival to run this year before COVID actually hit. So wow. we had a great – yeah. We had a great time down at Maxville and, yeah, privately run, not connected with any organisation whatsoever. So, yeah, that's Maxville Music Muster, all for the community and all for the artists pretty much. Okay, that's awesome. And Anthony? Yeah, ours are uh, privately run between myself and the venues. Um, So we work with auditoriums with the clubs on the Murray. Um, unfortunately, we haven't had any government funding or council assistance as yet, but hopefully as we grow, we can do that. So we rely on, you know, people to come through. Most of our events are free. Um, wow. So, um, yeah, the clubs do put in a lot of effort to help us out. Um, some of them are charged, but, yeah, depends on the venue. Okay. And, Glenn, is yours private or is it endorsed? No, ours is a private, uh, privately run uh, a festival too, Doug. Um, we don't have any government funding or uh, anything as such up here. Um, I run it with a very small bank of of. Um, we don't run a committee as such. Um, I've got probably seriously probably five um, like guaranteed volunteers that help me and work their backsides off, um, and then. You know, other helpers and that that, that jump in too. We we, we support um, like the the, the Gimpy Lions Club. Uh, yep. You know, a variety variety club, um, different different non for profit organisations right. uh, doing what yep. we're doing. But but yeah, no, basically it's we we don't rely on any funding at all. Okay, that's that's quite cool. And Terry. Yes, well, uh, ours is privately run. Four people run it, Wendy, Kerry and uh, Kenny. And um, it's been going eight years and we get about um, 500. We had 500 booked this year, but sorry, it's cancelled. But uh, we're going again in 2021. Wow. So move all the artists. As you can see, we've got Jade Hurley. We had... Um, Adam Harvey and Becky Cole the last couple of years and uh, it's been pretty good for eight years and uh, yeah, privately run, cater for everyone yep. and they all have a party and uh, we're <laughs> sad that uh, this, but there's uh, only one thing I've got to say that it's very sad that Bill Bailey's not coming back. Right, yes. You know, Bill Bailey, won't you please come home? <laughs> <laughs> No, the song, Terry, yep. The yep. Breeze, breeze yesterday. <laughs> and what about uh, Rob? Well Is done, your pri- um, pri- privately run or? Yes, mate. All the festivals I do are privately run. Um, they're all to keep an audience happy, basically. That's that's what they're for. That, I, I think the whole lot of us are there for, for that. Um, we know none of us are going to make a squillion dollars out of it um, because we all look after an age well not look after but entertain to an age group um that is obviously an elderly age group um right and and the blue rinse brigade and the the people that take their caravans on the road constantly the Um, blue rinse brigade (laughs) (laughs) stop it stop it see that that's a bit hard that's a bit harsh breezy you know you know people people about the age of terry gordon and older yeah right Hey Terry, that's that's yeah. bloody real hard. Yeah, I'm, I'm not over the hill, but I'm hanging on to the top. <laughs> Good on you, mate. <laughs> right. It's good to see you, Anthony, up there. Thanks, Terry. Yeah, yeah likewise, yeah. mate. Yeah, Tooley Buck and uh, Barham and all those places. Uh, Terry's been on. Uh, you run a great a show, of- mate. I must say, you do. Thank you, mate. Thanks yeah. for being part of it too. And yeah, well, good. You mate. and Rob have been to my events and. Uh, Yes. So we can keep growing with that. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is amazing. So those who just joined us, uh, this is completely interactive. If you have any questions, please type it up in the comments. Please like and subscribe and share it. So we have festival organizers for all the way from Victoria, because we're we're broadcasting here just south of Brisbane. We're all the way up at Gympie and where else did we have? Gold Coast. 
uh, all these awesome little festivals. Well, they're actually, probably not little, are they? They're probably massive festivals. So maybe the first question that I'm going to ask, and if the audience has any <laughs> other... <laughs> oh, there you go. Someone's about... That was a bit tricky, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> 72 people here, yes. So uh, I'd like to ask, how does one go about finding the motivation to put a festival together? So... You know, as uh, Frank Zappa famously once said, you know, or maybe it was Einstein because I like both of them, necessity is the mother of invention. So maybe, Vanessa, what drove you to actually start and putting together your own festival? Okay, well, I've, uh, I've been involved in uh, music for a long time. I really didn't get involved with musters and festivals because I was – a police officer, as you know, for a few years. <laughs> so I wasn't able to, to, you know, get involved as much as I wanted to. But then I started to get involved with um, with Musters. I went to Mergen. Glenn invited me to Mergen Music Muster. And then he had his muster here at Kemmel Park. And I thought, you know what, my hometown down there in Maxville, which is just a little bit south of Coffs Harbour, is the perfect setting for a country music muster. So I set about sites of, you know, bringing country music to the town, bringing visitors to the town because there's a bypass that goes through there now, and supporting the town, supporting artists and supporting great country music. And that's just me. My passion is just great fun, great artists and great music. And we had a ball this year. It was, like, amazing, right? Even wow. though, like, you know, we were outdoors and then all of a sudden we had to change to indoors, we still had a ball. Yeah. It was great. And that's my, so, my passion. I Just to pick, get this very clearly, have we got the whole eastern states represented from Victoria, New South Wales and Queensland? Yes. Pretty much. Pretty yeah. much. Yep. This is amazing. This is so yep. cool. So, um so, Anthony, and so mm. thank you, Vanessa. That's awesome. So you run a festival yep. in New South Wales. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, Anthony, so Victoria, what motivated you to put together some festivals in Victoria? So uh, I've been playing music since I was 13, uh, on the road <laughs> since I was 15. Uh, yep. <laughs> so um, music has been my passion, my life, um, and having the recording studio, you know, I love working with people and seeing talent come through. Um, I, I love people, full stop, and giving musos the go. I think it's great. Um, so, And I felt there was a niche. There was, there was a bit of a weak spot where, you know, they needed someone, I guess, younger to come through and, and – uh, the entertainment ladies at the clubs would need some help. So uh, I had all the sound gear, uh, the lighting, yep. the PA, uh, which is made in Brisbane, by the way, Acoustic Technologies. Oh, um, yeah, AT. Yeah, uh, that's cool. AT. So they, uh, we, they, you know, provide us with all their wonderful gear. So between that, um, five or six years later, here we are um, running events. Yeah, and it's, it's all come from just loving music and people, I think. <coughs> Yeah, I, that's that's a great answer. Yes, yeah, it's, it's people. I've got mm. uh, these uh, comments flying by here. So you're having a love of people. Okay, and if we go down the – here we go. How are you going, Chook? <laughs> I don't know who <laughs> Chook is. <laughs> is that You'd Vanessa, is it? No, no, All right, okay. Me, it's, it's probably All me. Right. <laughs> All right, okay. Sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry. <laughs> I know who that is. It's, um, <clears throat> that's John Nutty. You know John Nutty? <laughs> We're full of – he calls oh, me right. Chook, and I'll tell you about it one day. Okay, cool. <laughs> but, uh, so uh, if we go to uh, Glenn, if we go to Glenn, sorry, uh, Glenn, uh, what motivated yeah, no. you to do these things on the pri privately? Doug, I think uh, from my point of view, I'd, I'm like Anthony. I've been playing live since I was 13. I had my own band, and well, I guess you know we we work worked through the ranks, done a lot of a lot of road miles, I, I guess, as, as we know it, um, and then have worked at quite a few other masters up, up in this area, um, as well as I did the, um, the Slim Dusty Memories uh, Kempsey Festival for a few wow. years, where I f actually where I first met Breezy. Um, wow. and, and, and other, yeah, other masters up here, and then just a lot of people 
I guess a lot of people over the time that sort of support what I've done and what what we've what we've done have had said to me, why don't, why don't you do one on your own place? And I'd say, oh, it's just not the right time, you know, it's not the right time. And anyway, I'd 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 given um, a Mergen festival. I'd I'd worked there for about six years in the backing band and and the, as an artist, and then I, I gave them a couple of years of organisation to sort of get things on the right track. And then uh, it, it sort of grew from there and I decided, well, now's the time. So, yeah, we've, we've had two here and this year, well, in June, w- would have been our third. But obviously with the um, with the coronavirus, um, that's buggered that up really for this year like it has yeah. with, with a lot of others. But, yeah, but that's – and it's always, it's always been a passion. Um, I'd worked – I'd work with um, with the Webb brothers uh, yep. quite extensively for for twenty years, um, yep. which are actually well two are deceased now. Uh, one is the youngest uh, Webb brother, Barrett Webb, is still alive, and they're actually only twenty minute or the the property Thornside where the original um, country music muster started uh, back in eighty two. Um, oh, you're only, talking about the Gimp- Gimpy one, right? Yeah, the Gimpy Master yep. right back when it when it very first started. Um, well, it yep. was the Webb Brothers okay. that started it off with the Apex Club uh, on on their property. And they had uh, three years at Thornside, which was the name right. of their property. Yep, ten thousand acre property at, at uh, Widgee, which is only twenty, probably twenty minutes drive from here as a as a crow flyer sort of thing. Right, and we'd we'd worked extensively um, with them guys for for twenty odd years. And then it, it obviously got moved then from from Widgee to, to Ammonmore, where it's been ever since. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's right. always been a passion, you know. And I, yeah, I, right. I had two, I had not only in in with those guys. There was well, there was actually uh, the three brothers there. There was eight in that family, but three brothers. But I had, I've, I've got a twin brother that yep. played, and I had a younger a younger brother that also played. So there was three brothers that played. Uh, sadly, I lost uh, our younger brother in a car accident in '98. He was only okay. 19. Um, right. So the music thing has always been a yeah, it's been an we'll it, yeah. group for a long well, time, you know. Yep. Okay, yeah, right. So that's good. You've got the history behind there. And maybe if we go to Terry, what motivated you to do your music festivals? Uh, well, Doug, I've been in country music all my life from uh, for, for many many years. Uh, was involved sort of when Tamworth first started. Uh, we were going oh, wow. to Tamworth two years before the festival even started with uh, acts like the Singing Kettles and uh, all, all the good old ones you wow. know, that uh, have been around. Uh, and then um, I was lucky enough to have a television show at Tamworth way back in the 80s. Wow. And uh, then also in the 80s I started a festival down in uh, – well, I didn't, but uh, myself, Owen Bundell, uh, my brother, and um, uh, Barry Thornton, who was with uh, Slim Dusty for 30 odd years, we started wow. this uh, Bungendore Country Music Muster. And that's wow. coming up its 36th year in February, if it's not cancelled. Um, and then um, we, uh, we decided. Great effort, Terry. Oh, yeah. thanks, mate. Then we decided yeah, right we'd start on. one at, at um, uh, Almara. Eight years has been going, and uh, I've, it's the love of music. I think we all uh, all mates, and that's what uh, the festival is is great. You meet all these great uh, people that have uh, you, you read about them, and then you run into them at a festival like uh, Rob and Glenn and, and uh, the whole lot. And it's a, it's a wonderful thing. It's sort of a, not catered for the younger people, but mainly the older people. As someone said, the blue rinse. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was that was Rob. That was bloody Rob Brown. <laughs> 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 yeah. Great, great. But, uh, <laughs> they're, they're our supporters, and they love that. They they travel in caravans and they meet up and they come from uh, you know Nanango, all those festivals right down through to Kenmore and. Um, I'm pretty sad this year. I, I got cancelled from Kenmore because oh. it's not on. 
And uh, so, we put you. And we'll be back next year, mate. Next year. So if you were around uh, when Tamworth Music Festival obviously started, because yeah. it's now because Tamworth is now like nearly a week long festival, right? So did Tamworth actually start as just like a weekend thing or one or two day event before uh, it grew into a ten day event or whatever it is now? No, it, yes, it did start back in the seventy three. I think was the first one. Wow! Um, and it was the weekend, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then I'm not too sure how long it started to be the two weekends, uh, but it has been a really wonderful festival and put Tamworth on the map right around the world. And yeah. uh, it started off from like blokes like John Minson and and uh, Ross Murphy, all those blokes that lived at Tamworth, and uh, yeah, TTM wow. was the station behind it, and uh, it went for years and still going. Strong. So having a connection here yeah, with media. Right. Wow, that's awesome, man. Yes. What a story. That is so cool. And and we'll come back to it. So Rob, Mr. Blue Rids, um <laughs> you can give Vanessa some hair product because you know being a member of the blue team. Oh, I don't want, I, I don't need the blue rings just yet, Doug. No, no, no. no. I mean from being a police officer. That's not, not nothing to do with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, so, if so, that name actually sticks, I'm never going to speak to any of you again. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, what so, motivated you to keep keep uh, getting involved with, you know, running all these different um, festivals? What motivates you to do that? Well, Doug, it, it's – I'm not going to say it's in my blood, but um, when, you, when stick. you do something for so long and you love it so much, um, right. it's hard – hard to walk away from you can't i can't walk away from it um i've tried many a many time um my first country well i came to tamworth for the first time in 1980 for the festival um and then i played there for the first time in 1983 and i haven't missed one since um so, so i don't know how long that is now it's a long time oh, well. anyway um there you go Vanessa just arrived in 1973. I did. Not- good year. Good yeah, year. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, but I, I grew up listening to, you know, the, the Terry. I watched Terry Terry's show on TV for years and years and years and love it. Wow. So I, I flicked, on, flicked onto it just recently and I thought, my heavens, we could really do with something like that again, TG. Yeah, mate. Yeah, it'd be great. <laughs> it'd be good, wouldn't it? Yeah. What was the name of your TV show, Terry? Because you're a bit of a rock star there, mate. Oh, yeah. Must Be Country. That's what it was right. called. Yes. Yeah, right. And uh, uh, we so... had nearly every every country artist in Australia on it, and sadly half of them are not with us no more. But it oh, was wow. back in 82 we started. Yeah. yeah. Must, it was must good. Be country. Must Be okay. Country. Okay. So um, – and also the audience, if you're watching, please – well, actually, you would be watching if you're hearing what I'm saying. So if you have any questions, please ask. So next question, if we go around – so we've just covered the motivation. So maybe what about some uh, – before we get into other nitty-gritty, what about a, a fun story, some dirt? So what's the craziest thing that's happened at a festival, Vanessa? Especially being a police officer, <laughs> Vanessa, I guess your festivals must be run to the T, right? Uh, well, I've only run two at this stage, but, you know, I've got some stories as an artist, but um, Maxwell Music Master is becoming fast Rob. known. Yeah. yeah. So Johnny to- Blunt. <laughs> is, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, John. John Blunt is uh, uh, impersonates. <laughs> yeah, John Blunt actually impersonates um, Freddie Mercury in The Killer Queen and he's as international success and is actually impersonated. Uh, Freddie on a documentary and a movie status. So he's a legend. Sorry. Anyway, continue. Just give him a shout out. All good. All good. As I said, um, (laughs) you're going to get some comments tonight, I tell you, because there's a lot of people watching and I know who they are. So, (laughs) 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 Uh, But, look, I have some on-stage stories to tell, but from Maxwell Music Muster, because I've only run two so far, the best thing that's come out of Maxwell Music Muster is – Everybody gets together at the after parties. They are the best. Hey, Breezy. <laughs> hey, Glenn. They are, the, they are the best. Like, they are so much fun. Like, yeah. Do you have and a blue flashing light at the after party? 
<laughs> well, maybe I should, but Breezy actually sang Elvira and changed keys about seven times at the after party. Oh. I don't know how he did it, but he did it. So it was it was pretty good. So that's my member for <laughs> Maxwell Music Master. <laughs> okay. It was good. So the after parties is your uh, cool story. So maybe uh, Anthony yeah. from Victoria, what do the Victorians do that's totally crazy? What's a crazy uh, story from a master? Oh, we're, we're not too crazy, but uh, I think uh, a couple of things is uh, Rob Breeze's song that he sings there. The uh, You know the song, Rob? Help us out. No. No, you're getting dogged uh, tonight, <laughs> And and Terry Gordon's jokes, Terry. Uh, we <laughs> must say they are a winner up in Tullybuck. So uh, thank you very much for for sharing those jokes, Terry. <laughs> and, um, Thanks, Anthony. Certainly know how to deliver them, mate. So fantastic. But we have a lot of fun. And and uh, but I, on on a serious note, I think the best thing is all the artists getting on together. And, yeah. you know, yeah. jumping on well, stage, uh, inviting artists for one song during their act is fantastic and there's no issues and we're all happy. Um, and it's thank you to the artists that make it all run smooth and, ha and really pleasant. Oh, wow. So, so far the yeah. stories have been happy ones. Like they're not too crazy. Just lots of yeah. funny. That's right. Um, so, so, Rob, uh, so the feedback is from online. If you can uh, sort – you're the most technical person. We need some more uh, – <laughs> We need some more volume, mate. We need some more volume. So, um, I don't know that I can actually fix it, mate. I, I don't know. What's it might be on your white, white lead, the microphone. If you maybe hold that microphone up to your, um, uh, yeah, thing I don't there. think there's any anything coming. Oh, the other white one. There at all? Is there? The other white one. No, the white one's headphones. Oh, right. Okay. Cool. Two no different, problem. Two different things going on. Sweet. Okay. Uh, yeah. so over to Glenn. What's the craziest okay. story that's happened at one of your masters, Glenn? Well, I've got, I've actually got a beauty. This was uh, from our very first muster um, that we had here, and one of the one of the food vans that I was mentioned the Variety Club, um, one of the one of the food vans that 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 we have here, and this particular guy also he does a lot of them variety bashes. And he's done the, you know, back in the day, the teenage uh, mutant ninja turtles, and and <laughs> with with the old vanguard, and then he had a Dracula thing with a with a stretch limo, and then his latest thing that he's done is the old Bedford truck as the Beverly Hillbillies, and he's got you know the old rocking chair and everything up on top, and the whole and plays the music, the whole deal. Right. Anyway, the first year we were here, and I had a phone call. I was up in the house actually here. And I had Gary Fogarty, which is a, uh, a great bush poet, and Gary Compares uh, for me here. And the phone rang, and it was the guy that, that was driving the water truck. And he said, I've got a really good story for you. And I said, oh, what's that? And he said, I've just picked up some Viagra pills in the paddock. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, Blue yeah, right, eh? Right, eh? Blue the blue, oh, the blue, blue rinse. rinse, the blue oh. rinse brigade, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I'm saying, yeah, right, eh? that's all good. And uh, anyway, we haven't been able to track down who they are, who, you know, who owns them. So anyway, that was that was fine. So the conversation ended, and Gary and I were having a beer, and we we're, were talking over this, and and about half an hour later, the phone rang again from the same guy, Dave Robbo, that drives a water truck for me, and he says, we've just found out <laughs> who they belong to. This guy has come up. <laughs> Breezy remembers this because he was here. Um, <laughs> and the funny, the funny uh, part about this whole story, the guy that actually runs the food van and with this variety club um, whole thing, his name is Charlie Horn. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, this, Charlie Horn with uh, some with the, pills. and they were, uh, they were his pills. <laughs> so, I've actually get said this to uh, Gary, and we've had a yarn about it. And Gary's put a put a little story together that night that brought the house down like it was absolutely <laughs> bloody hilarious. But yeah, it was Charlie Horn with his stiff black coffee and his yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It was uh, so that's that's probably the one of the one of the one of the one of the most memorable things that's happened here. Yeah. Wow. Funny. I um, 
just before uh, we get Terry to do his thing, Terry, I've just Googled you, man. Like, you're like royalty at this stuff. <laughs> you, you've had your you've had your own TV show. Like here, I'm just going to zoom in on uh, just my my face for a second. So everyone watching, like. Terry's a freaking legend. Look at this. <laughs> There's, He's a man. There we go. Woo! So, uh, you go. so you've, oh, you've right. been involved. You've been involved in uh, lots of lots of art, and so, more importantly, supporting artists. So, having yes, been involved mate, yes. in the TV show, and also you were there at the inception of Tamworth. Oh man, this is amazing. Yeah, so anyway, yeah. um, so you would probably have Love a good up. story then. Lots of. What's the what's a funny story if it's got Viagra oh, in it as well? There's various ones. Actually, I do have a book out. <laughs> what? And there's a Let lot of the... stories of that. My autobiography. Uh, uh, it's called the, out... Hi the Highway of My Life. Highway of My Life, mate. It, um... I'm on it. Look, check this out. Here we go. This is Terry's book. He's an author as well. <laughs> oh, seriously. Now Anna Rose, uh, a lovely lady from Tamworth, wrote the book. Oh, okay. Uh, Sorry, you're just and, on the uh, front cover. <laughs> she, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, getting off that, uh, I think the, uh, a funny story to me, and uh, I hope yeah. it's to you when you hear it. <laughs> What's that? Oh, yeah. I got a mate that's uh, uh, Ian Grant. He's got Grant's Caravans in Victoria, and he's one of the sponsors for the festival. And uh, he decided he'd fly up to Coolangatta for the about the second festival with a, another country singer by the name of Dave Pryor. And um, they flew up to Cool and Gatter. I drove up to pick them up. And uh, Ian is a very friendly fella and he met this lady on the on the plane and they had a few scotches. And they yeah. off the plane they came and she was, you know, pretty wobbly and saying, oh, it was so good to meet you on the plane. She went to grab a suitcase and she fell on the conveyor belt. Oh. And when she, <laughs> he went to grab it, I went to, she went straight around through the circle through and came back through on the conveyor belt. <laughs> so you I'm should just, have seen you sorry? should have seen the laughs at the at the terminal at Cool and Gatter when she came back through the the rubber flaps. <laughs> <laughs> also, um, I just found another picture of you, uh, Terry, if that's all right to show you. This is awesome. I'm going to zoom in for this one. You'll have to give us the backstory. This is so rock, rock and roll. As you can see, I've got all these rock guitars here. Who would pose on their front cover with a stubby? Mate, that is so oh, cool, man. Yeah, that's that right. is hardcore. What about the suit? The red, what about oh, the red, suit, dude, mate? red shoes. Yeah. Red and a shoes. stubby, mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That is awesome. Gee, yeah. <laughs> My background's IT, a bit of a nerd. Yeah, well, that's right. awesome. <laughs> so, um, so Rob. He'll go well up here with us, Breezy, won't he? Yeah. <laughs> he'll fit in like a, fit like a glove. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Blue Rinse. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> Mr. What's Blue Rinse Breeze. <laughs> what's, that, what's a rock and roll story or country and roll story? I've got, a, I've got a country and roll story, mate. I, I had the pleasure of being the musical director for Tamworth on Parade back in the 90s. Um, wow. For That's amazing. Three or four years. And, and part of that deal was we we did some shows at the Sydney Opera House, as Terry would have been on one or two of them probably, mate, weren't you? Yeah, just, mate. Just yes, name yeah. drop that. We just did a gig, a gig at the Opera House. Yep, just name drop. Yep, yeah, that's yeah. cool. That's good. Yeah, you got to do that. <laughs> Yeah, please do, they, please they do. For four or five years, um, to pack out houses, may I add? Oh wow! And the compare, they're a cast of thousands, so they had probably twenty-five or thirty acts on these shows, and um, everyone sang one or two songs, depending on how high or low you were in the in the ranking of country music stars, basically. Right. So the compare has introduced. Oh, Costa on stage, and Stan, those of you that don't know Stan Costa, was absolute legend in, in our industry um, as right. a songwriter and a, and a bush ballad performer. And the comp here has gone, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Stan Costa. And old Costa swung his guitar around and his false teeth 
have flown straight across the stage <laughs> under the grand piano. Wow. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> wow. So what happened then? 2,000 so... people. And he's got no teeth. people in the auditorium. <laughs> All in fits of laughter. And, and, oh, and Stan just wiped it all and, and ha- well, got on with the show, as you do in disastrous situations. Wow. As you do. As you do. So, so did, was there an awkward pause? Who picked his teeth up? Um, I actually think Stan picked them up himself. I was, I was playing the piano. I wasn't going near him. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. So, okay, so that's that's cool. Very cool stories and and learning a lot about all of you. Wow, I'm just I'm blown away. So maybe just about the country thing. I was actually my one of my very first band as a kid, Chad Morgan. I'm not sure if you heard of him. Yeah. His uh, half sister was my band manager when I was a kid. So um, it was okay. it or full sister? I'm not sure, but um, yeah. So that's going way back. That was quite surreal. Anyway, um, and I actually played the Gimpy Music Master back in 1995. No, 95. Yeah, we were we played just after Gina Jeffrey, so I think she had a hit way about, way back then, the Gimpy Music Master. But um, yeah, anyway, that's my little bit about country. But about the festivals, what's some of the the struggles? Because I guess going private will have its, or maybe if we open the question up to maybe three points, maybe. <coughs> What's the advantages of running a festival privately and disadvantages? And, or maybe we'll just have two points. Just the pros and cons of running a, a private festival. So maybe, Vanessa? I, I knew you'd start with me and I was <laughs> sort of avoiding this question. <laughs> or, or you want me to come back to you? I guess you could provide your own security, right, being a police? Uh, wow. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'll start. It's all good. Um Maxwell Music Muster was actually, the first year was actually run with a non-for-profit organisation on board. And right. after that first year, they decided they didn't want to be involved anymore. For whatever reason, that's their decision. Like, And I just went, okay, well, let's just push ahead for the second year. And I thought, well, if people are going to support country music, they will support it. Like, And I... I was sort of in two minds. I'm thinking, do you need a committee? Do you need a non-for-profit organisation to support these masters to get people to come along, see great artists, have fun, which is what it's all about? And you know what? I proved that you don't. So I had no grants the second year. The first year there was a grant. The second year there was no grant. And it ran amazingly. So I have two minds about it. They can work Oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, God, see this car. I know who they all are. Like. Oh, that's, that's... You don't need security with the blue rinse. No, it can be stiff no, competition. No, God, no. No, no. And, <laughs> and you know what? Yeah. Some of those blue rinse people are pretty tough cookies to crack, let me tell you. So they, yeah. you know, they, yeah. yeah, so they're really good. But, you know, I, I have, I'm in two minds being that I'd run one with a non-for-profit organisation and then run one without one. So if I can do it without one and it's, you know, that's cool. Well, you know, it's all good. So, yeah, I'm I'm before and against because I've been involved in both. So Right. So can I ask maybe the third point? I've just remembered what I was going to ask. And why do you not ask for cancel, you know, or some kind of arts funding? Is it just a closed door or...? No, really it's not a closed. It's well, it is a closed door if you're non for profit organized. Like if you're not oh, a non for profit, it's yes. how you set it up. Okay, that's right. Because it's just me, like in you know, speed signs and um, did you know garbage runs and you know helped us. And she came out and she did a, a speech and she said, "Whatever you need help with, let me know and I'll see what I can do." They just couldn't contribute to money wise because it's not available for any individual person to get a hold of. Not that I'm aware of. I might be, but, you know, there could be avenues there, but I just haven't explored them just yet. Yeah. But if you're a non-for-profit organisation, you can apply for grants with the arts department, with councils, with tourism, all that sort of stuff. Um, <laughs> I'm not even reading these comments. Like, I'll just, I can't, I can't Sorry. concentrate. <laughs> no, I understand. Put them up because I'll, I'll read them later. But, you know... It, 
that's the thing. Like if everybody, my whole thing is if the whole community gets involved and supports everybody, it's great. And we did it. We did it with no no funding at well whatsoever. Like the people supported the music they want to hear, <coughs> which was fantastic. So. Yeah, and I, I think also too it's when we go around the panel, I think this is going to be good to get three different state government feedbacks because, you know, yeah. we've been f having festivals on here from Queensland, New South Wales and Victoria. This is just, yep. this is amazing. So over to <laughs> Anthony. It all, so thank you, Vanessa. Uh, Anthony, pros and cons, running a private festival and do you endorse getting, you know, uh, government help, you know, I think, sponsorship? Um, I don't think we fall under that banner, being festivals on the Murray, which has always been the block. Um and I guess um, being self-taught, um, I've learned how to run festivals myself. So I've, uh, six years ago, I've, I've worked out a, a system. Um, two years ago, I've had Vicky jump on board, who does all the um, artist contract and all the, the detail while I'm doing the marketing and looking at the venues and the sound and um, also looking for artists for Vicky to follow through and book. So... I guess to recap, it's it's what I've just learnt myself. Um, yeah. Okay. And what about when you said it didn't fall under that banner? Is there like, um, I don't know, my phone keep every my phone keeps talking to me, and I don't even try. But every time I talk to it, it does nothing. Um, the <laughs> yeah. So my point is, it's. Is there a classification? Is yeah, it not for profit, and then that's why that's you don't right. even ask exactly for help. That's right. Exactly what Vanessa was talking about. So right. it's um, yeah. and really, I, I kind of really don't know where to, where to go for help, and um, so yeah. I, I think it's just running smooth at the moment, um, and moving yeah. forward, we may look into different options. Uh, I'd love to work with our local Rotary or Kiwanis Club, um, and hopefully support them as well. So that and what might be a way. What kind of numbers, maybe, Vanessa, if you quickly say, what kind of numbers go to your festival? So the first year we had um, 99 caravans attend. The second wow. year, without any, like, anything that was just people attending, there was 161. Wow. And what about Anthony? How big are so your festivals? Yeah, they probably float around the 200, so give and take. So 180, 250, um, I, I would say, yeah. Yeah, wow, that's awesome. Okay, and over to Glenn. Pros and cons for running a private festival and what, council endorsement, yes or no, and maybe point number four, it's growing now. What size? Mate, um, from uh, from a... Uh, uh, running a festival and being involved in uh, other festivals and being sort of on the organising committee for a couple of years with non-for-profit um, committees, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, just personally myself, and it's no disrespect to, to non-for-profit organisations or, or anybody, it's, it's not, not throwing it out there to non-for-profit, um, like and I'm sure all you, well, all you guys, Anthony and 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 um, and Terry and Breezy, especially you'll you'll understand this. I'm like Anthony. I'm self-taught, so basically what I've learnt is what I've learnt the hard way on the road. I've had no, I've had no um, anybody putting me under their wing and going, come with me, come with me, come with me. I've had to, you know, I've had to ride it out from what was right, what was wrong. And and I've come up with what I've what I've done myself, and and I guess it's it's from my from my experience um, in just in the game and, and and the road miles over the years of, of knowing what I guess up here working with bands like I had a band for twenty years, and we work two nights a week, sometimes three nights a week, um, and doing anything from a pub gig to um, old-time uh, dances, gypsy taps, barn dances, evening three steps, all that sort of stuff, to to, to dead balls, show balls, things like that. So we had a, a big diversity of, of – it wasn't – I wasn't just a country singer. 
or a rock and roll singer or whatever we could sort of cover nearly anything. And I guess that just comes with, as Anthony said, it's what you learn. It's what you learn along the way. And I just, I just find um, exactly what Anthony and, and Vanessa said there. It not that we've we've come across um, like funding from 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 any council support or whatever or or local government stuff because we are running these as a you know as a as a not muster uh, a private yep. a private uh, not non for profit muster. Um, so there's really nothing nothing out there. Having said that, um, just to, to to throw it out there to the to the grey nomads and the people that do support these musters, and I'm sure Anthony and, and Terry will, will probably agree with this. Um, you know, there's a lot of other musters up and down the coast, all the way down south and whatever that 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 are working under a, a non for profit arrangement Better. that that get grants right. you know it could be twenty thousand dollars a year it could be oh, i don't know whatever right. um but these guys as i know terry knows and anthony and, and rob know what it what the costs are with insurance um right. you know okay. like here toilet hire um <laughs> you know that's bands right? artists the, <laughs> the, the whole thing to be able to, to be able to cover your costs and right. when you're paying for that out of your own pocket, um, you know you, you you do get a small percentage, and, and we had it we've we've had it here, and 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 when you actually right. sit down, like when when we finished here, um, and you go and have a beer with them, some of them that are still camped here for a couple of days, and you know, oh, and they we get we get talking, oh, why right. you know how come it went from this price last year to this price this year, right? And that when you actually sit and you spell it out, and you go, well. You know the insurance costs from last year to this year was this, and then the the hire on on facilities that you're hiring in generators, toilets, lights, blah blah blah, artist right. costs, everything else. And when you actually explain it, and and you 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 put it out there like that, they go, oh, oh, right, eh? And a lot of them don't yeah. realise, and and I'm right. sure Terry, you know, you you know you all this. A, a lot of people don't realise. Right. The, the costs that, that are right, involved in, in running these right. things, eh? Yeah, right. Well, just but, from the little but, bit. But just on right. numbers, just on numbers before, like, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm done. But our first year here, we had 330 caravans. We've only been going two years. 333. 330, <coughs> 330 wow. we had the first year. Congratulations. Wow. And then yeah. last year which was shaping up really good and, and it was about the only time in history I think the weather <laughs> forecast has got it right. It was bloody terrible. Yeah. And we ended up we I think we ended up with three hundred and thirty three. We ended up with more, but it was um wow. yeah, the, but it was terrible weather. It rained, it poured, you know, it was shocking. Because our, ours ours up here is an open air is an open air festival. We've got no right. undercover at all. Wow. Okay, cool. Very good. And Terry, so you've seen a lot. And yes, probably mate. attended attended a lot. So, what what's yeah, well, the pros and cons of running a festival? Well, I guess uh, Glenn summed it up. The main thing is the uh, the hardest thing is the expenses, all those things, <laughs> those toilets yeah. and uh, and insurance. And um, we started at Clarence Valley one with about a couple of hundred caravans, and then um, Wendy is a hard worker. She uh, Phones people right through the year, gets them all going there like Vanessa. And uh, it's built eight years and it's uh, built up. I think we had about 900 caravans last year. Wow. Uh, wow, wow. Great That's setup, awesome. mate. It's a good setup. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It was wow. good. And uh, I think we would have went that this year, but we had a, uh, um, we had Jade Hurley as the guest artist. You all know Jade. Yeah. Uh, who's just over my shoulder there, you can see, over this shoulder. And, yes. uh, He's the draw card for 221. And um, we advertise Wendy's got friends that have a transport company in Grafton and we put uh, about eight trucks with that sign you'll see on the back of the trucks. And they're all, yep. it's a local thing and they all help one another. Even uh, we've never had help much from the council, but they're all on side and uh, it's a wonderful little festival. And so... Uh, because the Gold Coast, where your where your festival at, 
the, is the Gold Coast? No, it's Grafton. 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 Oh, Grafton. Oh, I live on the Gold Coast, but yeah. Oh, right. Sorry. Yeah. One job. One job. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> flame trees. Flame trees. That's it. Well, that's that's the song. Trees. Anyway. Jack oh, really? <laughs> I know. I actually went. I did a gig. I was on tour and did a gig at Grafton. I was like waiting to see all the flame trees, but they were jacaranda trees. It's all <laughs> purple. <laughs> it was not on fire. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. But, and, and it's uh, also it's also helping one one festival will promote the other one. And exactly, uh, it's right. great. Vanessa and uh, Glenn have been promoting ours, and we promote theirs, and you're helping together and. Uh, uh, all those uh, people that follow it, they they come along, they turn up at the other one, and uh, it's great those blue rinses that we got out there, <laughs> Rob. <laughs> so, Rob or or Mr. Blue Rinse, um, and it wasn't me that time. It wasn't me. It was <laughs> <laughs> um, so, pros and cons of the festivals you've been uh, organised being private or have you been involved with some festivals endorsed by the council? And what kind of yeah, numbers? Doug, many, many different ones, mate. Um, the, the good part about the private festivals is the fact that you can go and talk to the one person generally that is organising it and get a result what? if there's a problem or, or no problem. Um, whereas... <laughs> The committee organ the committee organised ones are just really hard to get answers from from anybody. Generally speaking, generally speaking, that, that that's my my deal. Um, I do a lot of playing at festivals, um, backing bands, and that sort of thing. So I'm I'm generally on on deck most of the time. Um, and if I want an answer for something or I want to tell somebody something i need to go to the right person and i, th right. I find the the community-based ones who the hell do i see now basically right that yeah. sounds like reminds me of uh, john cleese's monty python oh we need to have yeah, a meeting yeah. let's have a meeting about a meeting yeah right yeah 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 <laughs> But it's uh, a bit like who it's a it's a bit like do you want to speak to the boss or do you want to speak to someone that knows what's going on <laughs> right. right. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, yeah. And what kind of numbers are you looking at, Rob, with all those ones that you've worked with before? Look, I've I've, I've done festivals from forty people through to well, Tamworth, who boasts sort of sixty thousand, but um, probably might wow. have done the old Charters Towers Festival in the nineties that. That had sort of seven or eight thousand people at, at, at your footsteps, at the at the foot of the stage, and and Gimpy as well um, in the nineties when it was well, it's really still happening now. But um, I haven't been involved in Gimpy for a long time. Um, once again, the Mildura Festival, absolutely terrific. Um, we're talking a couple of thousand people at the foot of the stage. Um, wow. And the list goes on, you know. There's a Terrera Festival um, down in Nowra, which I, I, I do regularly. Um, and, of course, Maxville and, and Kenmore Park, which are both both young festivals. But I can see those two festivals growing like crazy over the next few years. And I'm looking forward to going to Almara next year, TG. Yes, mate. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. 21. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, next question is uh, maybe directed for, as being a musician. I'm a musician. So what if I wanted to play on one of these festivals? Is there a process? Do you guys actually scout the talent throughout? Do you actually engage in online presence? And You know, being 2020, obviously there's no shows at the moment, but as of 2019, like what was the process in scouting the talent? Because I guess this is instrumental in drawing it, drawing a crowd. Yeah. to get the numbers up in the caravans, right? So maybe, Vanessa, how do you pick your at talent? Well, I have a little um, application process. So everybody applies, then they have to put their links of YouTube, Facebook videos, websites, whatever, and I just go searching and I just see what they've done live, what they've done privately, what they're sending me, and there is, there is so much talent out there that I want to promote new people 
but there's there's got to be a balance um there has to be a balance of those people out there that people love and follow and just you know go that they just die hard fans but then i right. want to promote the new people that are coming through that just you know i mean when i started doing this it's hard to get on some of these festivals because they don't know who you are they right. don't know who you are um, yep. So, you know, once you get that foot in the door and then you get a bit of promo and it, it all sort of grows from there. And that's what I, that for Maxwell, that's what my little focus is, is to, you know, um, have have some really um, long-standing artists that people know, love, trust. Yep, we're all good. But then introduce the new people that are coming through so that the Blue Rings clan can get to know, <laughs> can get to know some new people. You started like, a phenomenon, Bob. You know, yeah, oh, look, that's okay. <laughs> but, you know, the feedback that I've got from the two musters that I've done at Maxwell, and there there have been people that we've never, ever heard of, and they're the, the those people that follow <coughs> these musters go, these new people are great. Where were they hiding, you know? So that's, that's my philosophy is bringing new people out, the young ones, you know, but in saying young ones, I still want to keep it back to classic country as well. I know there's a place for the new country, like Gimpy Emma Moore has their new country, but Maxwell is pretty much based on the classic country stuff um, because that's what I grew up, that's what I love, and that's what all these people love. So if we keep it to that niche, and when I get the applications, I scout through them and, like, it's not a it's not a thing to say no you're not good enough it's just budget it's what you're doing and what fits what what we're what we're doing down mm. there pretty much and yeah. if I just add something right on the end there you said something so I'm t- coming from an artist perspective is yep. knowing your value so mm-hmm. I mean I could say if I applied for one of your festivals and say hey I'm worth ten thousand dollars you know how how do you gauge their value if you really want an act is there a, is there a discussion in um getting it sold or the deal signed so to speak well i guess it's you know well show us your value pretty much like right show, okay show us why why you're worth ten thousand dollars you know like why should right. i pay you ten thousand dollars to not paying somebody else ten thousand dollars? five that, acts two thousand dollars yeah right that's okay right, exactly yeah, yeah so i can yeah, have, just you know yeah, five acts, two thousand dollars each, and they're getting some more exposure. Where that person that would have ten thousand dollars has gigs all over the place. Right. That's that's me. Like you know, I think well, you've got gigs, so why would I pay you ten thousand? Where these people are struggling to get noticed and get out there. Let yep. me support you guys. Not that I don't want to su- support the ones you know that are what you know charging ten thousand dollars. But they're doing yeah. it already and they have a lot of gigs, you know. So my main focus is bringing new people through and giving them a go. Awesome. Okay, cool. And we go over to Anthony. What do you do as a talent scout and how do you engage them? So a lot of it is, um, like what Vanessa said, we don't have an application form. Um, a lot of it is is watching the artists on Facebook. Um, between myself, Vicky and Helen, so the two other girls that um, helped me with with the artists, and also wow. networking with uh, with Rob and Vanessa and Terry, and talking to other promoters as well is important. Um, I also look at who's travelling through the area. So when Mildura wow. was running, we had a festival a week before Mildura, <laughs> Tullybuck, which is uh, you know 150 kilometres. Um, so we quite often would look at artists that would be willing to do the two festivals. Um, someone that's got a caravan always helps cutting the accommodation costs. So that's also something we look at. Wow, um, that's a good point. Yeah, wow. Mm, what so about a troop carrier? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've got, I've got, got a, troopy, a big that's, that's, a that's, that, I've got a troopy, that's why. <laughs> Yeah. If you got yeah, a big uh, ass unit full of beer, mate. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, Won't be full for long, Glenn. <laughs> What's that? Won't be full for long. <laughs> and um, we got to so get him really, up here, bud. <laughs> but I, I really like what you said there, Anthony. So you actually check out the digital president, pre- president, presence, digital presence. Yep. Checking okay, out. cool. 
a lot of Facebook um, sort of scouting there. Um, and I guess being in the game, you kind of know who, who draws a crowd and also willing to give new ones a go. Uh, I must just say, yeah, ours are a little bit different where we have a dance floor in all our festivals. So the artists must be required to play the right style of dance music. Um, and like cater tech, for- techno and hip hop or? Oh, no, traditional country. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> country. Um, not modern. We do like the traditional country at, at our events. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then we can have a, a little coffee shop area where they can do their originals and their slower stuff there. But, yeah, mainly focused for the dancers. Um, they also must be able to work with a backing band. So I try not to allow backing tracks at our festival unless it's um, – maybe a 3.30 spot where the band needs to have a rest. Yeah, wow. Which is that's very – that's really – Works really well. Yeah, wow. And I actually – I remember uh, doing a gig um, and I had – it was actually a whole place full of line dancers and I had to work out the BPM. I think it's 140 BPM where they do most of their line dances. So I kid you not, I played every pub song you can think of at 140 BPM and they said they loved it. It was bizarre. Uh, here we go. If the festival is trying, we got a question here. It's festivals to, trying to get people with caravans come there. Have a look at the age group for such people, and you will find they are older, perhaps retired. They are looking for the classic country. Well said, Vanessa. There we go. Cool. Okay, over to Glenn. Um, pros and oh no, what are we up to? Oh, selecting an artist. So what? How do you select an artist, and how do you sort out the dollars? Um. I'm actually exactly well a lot of well a lot of what Go Vanessa Terry. said and, and a lot of what um, have a beer. What, what, what Anthony said. Have a scotch, Terry. Warm me up, mate. <laughs> Look, mate. I've even got my own mug. Look, see. That's all right. Can you see this? Look, me too. I've even got my name on it. Look, oh, yeah. well, let well, me zoom in. There you go. There we go. There, there, we go. there. there. There we go. Where I'll are just we? put on Glenn. There we go. Turn it around. There. Oh, I got Glenn on it. Cool. He's a champion. Yeah, beauty. Champion. <laughs> champion. Awesome. That's my favourite mug. But anyway, getting back to the um, <laughs> getting back the mug that mum gave what, me. The mug. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I, I'm very similar um, to what Anthony said there. After you know, been working with a lot of festivals and, and, and in, in the backing band thing for me anyway, um, there's, there's some, there's some new ones that, that, that I haven't met and you think, yeah, geez, they'd go all right up here. And I, and I think it's picking to me, it's, it's picking the artists for the crowd, but not only that, what I do here is there's a lot of festivals up here that are, traditional bush ballad festivals so it's just traditional australian bush ballad festivals and there's some here that don't like any classic um you know american stuff or whatever i don't i don't categorize mine for that i try and work um have a good variety of artists from traditional australian stuff um to um you know original artists and then your classic your classic country artists yeah we ha- i supply uh, a backing band uh, here for for mine which I have a, a pretty good lineup with uh, with Dougie Gallagher that worked on the midday you know, midday show or Mike Walsh show for for years oh, oh um, wow that's cool uh, Michelle Rose that everybody knows in the industry that's, well, I like Dougie, you know. It's nearly easy to write a rap sheet on who they haven't worked with than right. than who they have worked with. Uh, Mike Vidal on 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 Upright Bass that, with the Bushwhackers and, and did a lot of uh, producing with Slim early, in the early 70s. Wow. Uh, Tony Wagner and Keys and, and myself. Uh, I'm probably the weakest link out of the whole outfit, actually. But, um, but anyway... Oh, yeah, I, I struggle along on guitar. So, uh, <laughs> but but having said that, um, what what Anthony says, I, I try and the backing track thing doesn't bother me. Um, but but what I do here is 
I, when I set out a program, I look at it from a band's point of view. Yep. Um, so, you know, if the program starts at, just, just say for argument's sake, starts at lunchtime and you work out your sets, I know when a band needs a spell. So yep. I'll throw in a solo artist or someone that works with backing tracks in, you know, to give the band give the band a break and then and then we come back with the band. You know what I mean? So that's right. um I don't I don't yeah, I don't sort of categorize that. Um but that's I, I know what Anthony's saying with, yep. with that. And that's that's just and, and and as far as artists go, yeah, it comes back to I believe it's it's quality for dollar. Um you've got a budget that that you that you're working towards. So You've got to, well, to make it work, especially when you're working with a non-for-profit, uh, when you're not working with a non-for-profit thing, so you're not working on grants and you're working um, as a private show, so it's coming out of, well, like in my situation here, out of my pocket. Right. Um, I've, got to, I've got to put on the best show I can with the best artists I've got um, for the money. Right. That's good. Well said. I, I really like but that. That makes sense. Mm. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I'm with you there. So, Terry, yes, um, with the most experience of looking, I mean, you would have seen heaps of people come up through the ranks like Keith Urban and all those guys. I mean, I'm only saying what I'm aware of, but I'm sure you've seen lots of other artists. Right. So how do you yeah. go actually choosing your artist to play with your knowledge? And well, I still love like that album cover by the way with the beard so right. <laughs> until i saw you put the blanket on no, just... <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit cold right <laughs> it's a cold snap on the gold coast tonight <laughs> yeah right okay i'm yeah, just north uh, of be you, cold mate. if you're in your yeah. bow tie and your spurs terry yeah, mate. <laughs> <laughs> i'm sitting at the table there i got my shorts and thongs on would you believe That's my <laughs> i'm not game to stand up <laughs> But, uh, okay, so that's yeah. still rock and roll. All right, take it back. Yeah, I take yeah. it back. <laughs> <laughs> but a bit like Glenn, yeah, we, you know, a, a lot of the artists and most of them, and you try and rotate them and uh, look after the people you know as well. And then you try and have some new ones too. And then some names are bigger than others, and you, you juggle them out and uh, uh, you try and get them back. But there's so many artists in Australia, it's hard to, you know, uh, probably go five or six years before you get one of them back. But uh, it's uh, a bit like Glenn and then there's, we have a good backing band with uh, Crosscut Records. Lindsay Waddington puts his Watto. band together, Watto. Everyone knows Watto yep. and they do a great yep. job. Uh, exactly. And then we have poets, Ray Esri and uh, all that in the morning and then you try and put a poet in again in the middle of the day or something to give the band a break, as uh, Glenn said. But, uh, yeah. Seen, we're lucky but that we're in the game and we know the artists. Right, if you weren't in the game, and uh, it'd be a bit hard to to, to pick all the mm. ones that uh, at pie. You might have good publicity, but you might uh, the old blue rinse mightn't like them out there. Might. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, uh, so you've started so, something here, Rob Breeze. But yeah. Yeah, the, <laughs> so, uh, Terry, just to be clear, you still look at all your new talent on your festival, Bill, that it's from a digital perspective. You see how they're trending on Facebook, Instagram or YouTube. Is that what you're looking at? Yeah, and mainly being around and seeing how they go if you're on a festival and they fire pretty good, you think, well, yeah, must get them for... So that's, so that's, a, good in, that's a good insight mm -hmm. to every band is you never know who's watching, right? Yeah. You just mm -hmm. You never know. Okay. So, And that's I right. think also I've seen a lot of bands come and go because they try and, you know, upsell it and oversell it at the, the first festival that they play, but they forget, you know, there's people like yourselves who are running festivals for years. Oh, look, look, Gimpy Muster and uh, Tamworth and that number of years. Like if you burn your bridges early on, man, you're out. Oh, yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, that's right. Exactly. Okay, so over there's to... A good, and and a, the good comment too, Doug, just to jump in, mate, before you go to, yeah. to Breezy. A good comment that Terry made there too, which um, you know, variety and and 
and rotation of artists. You know, I, that's that's one thing that I've tried to do up here in Queensland. There's a lot of festivals up here, um, you know, that I've well I've worked with over the time, and it, it's like you've got your core of artists. Sure, yeah, I don't have a problem with that, and they're great artists, and the crowd follow them. But right. also, when you're running your own when you're running your own thing, and not only that, when, when you're working at, at these festivals, people say to you, oh, geez, you know, it'll be good to have a change, you know, like so right. a, a bit of variety and, and, and mix it in a bit with with a few new ones or, or ones that, you know, haven't been up this way. So, yeah, no, I'm with Terry exactly yeah. on that. I think yeah, you, you're, yeah. you're saying a good, good point there because your actual mm. customers who are paying to make this happen are the caravanners, right? So exactly you want right. to make sure they keep having something new to see, yeah. I say, Rob, yeah. and it and it's bums on seats, mate. Bums on seats, yeah. Like, yeah. like, j- just what, what, what? Sorry, but you were saying uh, a question there before, and I meant to bring it up um, there earlier. You know, with working out artists, it comes back to me. Um, you know, if, if an artist wants X amount of dollars, right? To me. Is is he going to attract enough people to pay his bill? Yeah, yeah. If you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah. Like you know, it's bums on seats. Like it's all right wanting big money, but you know, you, you got to weigh up. Got to weigh up the pros and cons. Do they get put more more money if they put bums on seats with thongs on? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Depends where they're wearing their thongs, Doug. Oh. Or if they have blue hair. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the party's getting rough. <laughs> so, uh, over to Rob. Sorry, Rob. I've been trying to get... be that time it. of the night, I reckon, Glenn. <laughs> so, You've been here, Breezy. So, uh, <laughs> Mr. Blue Rinse, how do you select your acts? <laughs> Mate... For musically related, I'm talking about. I have a totally different call on this. Yeah. Um, Unlike everybody else that I've just heard say, I only book my mates. (laughs) Um, That's why you've never had me on a show. (laughs) Right. I know know how this works. And (laughs) I've been let down something chronic before. And... Well said. As we all have, um, by people we didn't know. And and as Glenn and Terry and, and Anthony and Vanessa all know, it's about keeping the people that have paid the twenty dollars to get in or whatever the fee is, yeah, they've got to go away smiling. It's yep. it's no different yeah. to it's business. It's what it mm-hmm. is, you know? Right. Exactly, mate. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I really I really like what you said there about um booking your mates. So maybe uh <laughs> is a champion too. <laughs> Um, I guess that's the adage, the old adage of it's not what you know, it's who you know. And can you maybe unpack that a little bit? Like, I guess you're talking about putting together a backing band, but what was a letdown that you've experienced to have that opinion? No, no, I won't say that. Um, Okay. I'm not even talking about backing bands. I'm talking about I, I have a fair bit of input with some festivals as to who goes on them and who doesn't. Um, wow. With other people. I, I'm not the main person. So, um, but you're still an influencer. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And you, you watch how some acts work a crowd or, or don't work a crowd. Um, and it, it's an entertainment value, you know? Um, yep. This day and age, you can't go off somebody's record or somebody's overproduced video clip or whatever because it's a different <laughs> kettle of fish live. Yep. Totally yeah, totally different yeah. kettle of fish. Yeah. Thank you for saying that's great. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, you've got to, you've got to see them live in a similar sort of situation to what you're going to employ them in. I think. And so it's always yeah. it's always really good to be introduced to them or know them. So there's a comfort thing going on with that as well. You know, personalities. Both sides. Yep. That, yep. That's my point. Um, so. If you look, worrying about live footage. So here's here's a funny thing coming from you, and I'm sure you've all probably seen this. So when I may as well just talk myself up now. So when I play guitar, I do. Some of you may have seen my online videos. I'm not sure, but it's it's all over the shop. It's hardcore. So the live show is 
something to look at. However, if I'm playing at a cafe, I will be playing the context, right? There may be a little bit of shredding, but however, I will still generally, I won't play something that the venue is going to empty out, you know? So yeah. I just, just to unpacking what you're saying about how to assess a band live, if, they, if you've never heard of them, never seen them, how do they get a look in if you're only going to book what you already know? If that makes sense. Um, they probably don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. <laughs> right. So they have to do the hard yards elsewhere. Okay. So that's good. No, I'm not, I'm not even saying that. Um, look, <laughs> I, I, I will track them down somewhere if, if I think they've got something to offer or... I've seen them somewhere. Um, what what a lot of people don't know, I, I actually own a little restaurant in Tamworth as well. Um, in Tamworth, that has a live a live entertainment venue, um, and we give a fair bit of time to to the Tamworth Songwriters Association during the festival, and and they have something like twenty five different acts come through a day. So I see all these young kids coming through and occasionally there's one or two that are really, really good and have got the bones for the sort of festivals that we do. You yep. know? Um, because I'm, we're, we're all in a similar sort of boat. We're all talking about the similar sort of country music that, yep. that we all grew up on and our, our fans enjoy. So none of the five of us here are trying to, trying to attract a crowd out of our own comfort zone. Understood. So you, because you understand your audience. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, we're, we're happy where we are. Absolutely. Yeah. And, 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 just and excuse me. I'm just know, trying to plug my phone I'm in. I'm going to put my hand up um, to go and get a, a, a gig at a jazz festival or a hip hop festival or anything like that. It's just, just, I understand that. Yeah. And, and that's, that's part of, part of years of, of, being told no, being told no. <laughs> you know, right, you know? right. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, oh, I'll just put Glenn on mute for a second. Mute. Yeah, I um, I really really like what you said, that, and, and thank you for being honest. That you know, sometimes you, it's not what you know; it's who you know, and you got to do the hard yards because I know That's some right. artists, yeah. you know, jump up and down and whinge and they're like, "How do I do this? How do I do this?" Well, pull the finger out and do some work. You know, go and do the hard yards yeah. and make the contacts. Yeah. Because I find right. that um, I've gone over the states a few times, and I kid you not, I make I work harder on the <clears> breaks <throat> than I do um, on stage uh, because it's it's contacts, you know. And I, the thing I love about Americans is that if you you've got thirty seconds to blow their mind, or just do what you do, right, just to impress them, as you everyone does in in real life. And the good thing is about Americans is they're not shy in saying what they think, you know? So if I get on stage and do something, I go, Oh my God, you should see this guy, you know? So, um, he's a funny rock star story. A uh, mate of mine owns a couple of bars in Memphis and, um, Monday night jam night. And I was having a jam, put my name on the board, waiting, 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 got up, got to play with the drummer. He goes, oh, I like you. You can stay. And I was like, okay, cool. No <laughs> idea who he was, whatever. He was the touring drummer for Toto. And the next thing you know, I'm playing with the bass player from Starship, and uh, just like mind blown, you know, because yeah. being respectful and you you got to you only understanding when that moment is when it's your time to shine. You have to be the brightest light in the room. Otherwise, get back and do the thing. But anyway, mm. getting back to your point, um, yeah, I really like your honesty. That you know, when the festival is successful, <clears throat> why do they need that artist? You have to prove your worth. You know, that's. Yeah, you know, that's right. mm. subjective yeah. versus objective. Yeah. Does anyone yeah. else have anything to add to that? Speaking of mates, um, well, Rob is actually the musical director of the bands at my music festivals. So I, I have full trust in him and he runs the stage and, and I don't have to worry. So I sit on the soundboard and basically mix the week and, um, I'm there. If anyone's got any questions, anything musical, they go to Rob and he can sort them out. Um, and wow. and as a promoter, that is uh, one thing I don't have to worry about. 
Mm. Going back yeah. to giving, giving people a go, um, quite often we might offer that person, if we don't know how they'll perform, is just to offer them one 30-minute spot on the Friday. Yeah. Um, and a lot of them are willing to come down, do one spot or maybe a Friday morning and a, and a Saturday morning. Um, then they can go off and maybe find a gig that night at another venue. That's another way of, of encouraging yeah. newbies in the That's festivals. Right. Let's hope well. we all. Let's hope everyone that it gets back after all this disaster yeah. to what it used to be. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Don't you reckon? Exactly. Yeah. 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 And help one another most, as much of, as we can. Most of the festivals that we all do um, have a walk-up contingency to them as well. And whether you like walk-up shows or, or don't like walk-up shows, at some stage in our lives or in our careers, whether it be the beginning or the end of it, we are all walk-up artists. Yeah, that's right. You know? That's right. Yep. Um, yep. We've all had a go. We've all got to have a go at, at doing the, the little freebie thing. And that, that to me, is a great stage to prove yep. your worth. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that's about good. Because I – yeah, I really, really like that. Um, so here's, here's a question – what about the, the proxy promotion? And what I mean by that is, you know, it's that, hey, I have a friend. I'm the proxy. I have a friend who's amazing. You need to put her on. Or the, <laughs> the mum or the dad. Hey, my son or my daughter is amazing. So, so Vanessa, how do you deal with the, the proxy, you know, promoted promotion of an artist? So they've got no um, maybe digital media or anything like that. How do, you, do they even get a look in? Well, it's hard because, I mean, if I can't go somewhere hey, to Christine. see them or if they haven't got anything to send me and I don't know the person that that's, um, you know, suggesting. <laughs> <laughs> we, we know all these people that are <laughs> commenting tonight. So, <laughs> awesome. um, yeah, if I don't know them or if I don't know who's recommending them or if I can't see them live or I can't see anything online, no, they don't get a look in because, like, I mean, if I said to somebody that didn't know me or if someone promoted me and they had no idea who I was, I wouldn't expect them to put me on. You, you know, could always send I, a sergeant in or something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> With a blue I rinse. Still have, <laughs> I still I, I, I could have done it blue. <laughs> but could, sorry, and sorry. Take, and, ta and take the handcuffs as well, then they can't, oh. they can't say no. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Maybe, maybe Jane, what, what? an OC spray as well, but no, I don't want to go too heavy handed. What are you saying? <laughs> Handcuff yourself to the microphone stand so they've got to listen to you. Well, they have to, don't they? <laughs> so, uh, so maybe uh, over to Anthony. So, same question How do you go with the proxy How advertiser? Do we go? In the early days, um, you would you would feel obligated to say yes, and mm. but then it comes back on the you know the, the fans' feedback, which helps. Um, so what I do now is I have, as I said, Vicky and Helen who help sift through that. Which, as a promoter, it works easier to I guess divert everyone to um, to the other two ladies to kind of do the sifting for me and the decision-making is then made between the three of us. And with, and with that sifting, I just thought of something. Mm. Um, do you look at the dates of when it's posted? Because obviously when people put stuff online, the thing that's been online the longest will have the most hits because of time and exposure. So do you actually look at date of post? Because, no. you know, an artist would have a progression, right? Yeah, for me it's kind of the first... 15 to 20 seconds, if I like what I hear, um, mm. then instantly I'm drawn to it. Then I'll dig further. Um, if, oh, sorry, if I meant like the first result. So if I type in, you know, um, I don't know, I can't think of an artist, right? maybe John Butler, mm. whatever song comes up in Google first will be the one that's got the biggest, um, it might be the oldest one, it might be from 2001. It wouldn't be from 2020. You know what I mean? So if an artist... With your little team, do you look at the currency of the videos? Um, yeah, would have to say yes to that, and then okay. just, cool. just, just shift. Yeah, yep, yeah. yeah, cool. And 
sorry, did you want to unpack that anymore? No, that's cool. And just keep shifting through their Facebook pages, their private pages and their, their business pages. Uh, Facebook business pages are always good for promoters and we're only looking at music-related stuff, not uh, posts about, you know, everyday stuff. So um, that's just a, a bit of advice for uh, all the performers. Set up your um, your business and your music page. That's great advice, man. That's that's awesome advice. What about uh, Glenn? Um, same question. Uh, yeah, so the, the Spruker, how do you deal with the Spruker? I guess it, it comes back to... To me, if if there's someone that that want to have a go um, that I haven't heard of or not familiar with, or, or depending, you know, where they're from or whatever, I, I guess I guess the first thing I look at from from my personal point of view is whether they can sing, um, yep. like in key, whatever. And the material that they're doing is them is that material going to actually suit what we are doing here? Right. Um, if it's if it's a name that I haven't heard of or whatever, I'll ring the likes of Breezy or Terry and say, "Hey, have you heard of, you know, um, like I'm up here and these guys, you know, they've been around," and try and track down, get a little bit of inside information. Um, yep. Of yeah, I know whether they've heard, you know, heard of them or or whatever, yep. and then and then work it from there. If you know, if 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 they're a completely new unknown, and 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 they said, oh no, we've never heard of them, and they they've come onto the scene. Well, I mean, probably the the uh, the technology today. Well, you can say right, oh well give us your contact, and we can set up a bit of a FaceTime thing or something, and they can sit there and do something with acoustic and, and I mean as Anthony said you, you, you can hear within the first 20 seconds whether you know whether they're going to work going to work for you in, in what you're doing or, or whether yep. they're not going to be suited I, I believe anyway yeah okay that's good that's yeah. good and, and Terry what do you think about that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I like to see them at least work myself and uh <clears throat> You know, if I have a recommendation, say, from Rob or Glenn and say, look, you've got to put this bloke on, he's really good. So I'll take take their word for it because they know anyhow, you know. Mm. And uh, That's good. Put them yeah, on, right. give them a go, and if they don't go well, well, I don't talk mm. to Rob or Glenn no more. <laughs> 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 we haven't had that happen yet. I'm trying to get on myself. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think, I think uh, Terry, you just uh, highlighted something very good there. So promoters talk to promoters, right? Because you're in the That's same right. business, yeah. right? Just yeah. like band band people talk to other bands. Yeah, wow. Yeah, and if someone goes plays up or something, the word soon gets around, and uh, yeah, yeah, so That's you right. know, forget, forget <laughs> this. <bit. laughs> you should and have so, been a detective, Vanessa. I should have. <laughs> <laughs> I've got that instinctive. Like, <laughs> and so, what about uh, Rob? What What do you do for um, you know, the the spruker or someone says, "Hey, you should get this up." So it's not the actual artist, but someone whinging at you saying, "You need to do this. You need to make this." What? How do you deal with that? And does it work? Um, look, every every spruker is different. Every artist is different. Um, they all well have said. a different approach. They all have a different line. Um, <laughs> You've probably heard them all. I've heard a lot. I, I don't know about all, but I've heard a lot. Um, look, it's a hard one to get your head around. Um, if I've got time, I'll, I'll gladly give anybody a go in the right situation. Well done. And well I'm not done. talking about main show time. No, and, you know I'm talking yeah. about um, in in the morning show in the morning show or something like that where things are really relaxed and the audience is not all there taking taking everything in um, because all of all the festivals that we do generally run from sort of nine or ten o'clock in the morning through to stumps at night 
Well, and there is there is a lull time. No matter what anybody says, there's a lull time. Mm. So there is, and we've all we've all probably got avenue in our programs to to slot somebody in for two songs. Right. Really. Um, yep. Whether, whether we planned it or not, um, there's there's always that opportunity. If somebody is walks in with the manager from hell, that's not going to let go until you say. Little Johnny's going on stage. Um, <laughs> there's an avenue somewhere to give him a bit of a crack, surely. Okay. If, if the vibe's right, you know? If the vibe's right. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, and actually, if we expand if we expand that point there, vibe, I mean, like, when you're at a festival and you're in work mode, like, when is the vibe right, you know? So, obviously. All the time. Oh, well, that's it. <laughs> true master, he true it. master. He Maybe should be a pol- he should be a politician, <laughs> shouldn't he, Doug? <laughs> he should. <laughs> when I he's like got it. his I blue like hair. It. Yeah. <laughs> yes, of course, of course. So, uh, so that's I guess that's from the artist point of view, and we discussed the money thing, and I really like what you've all unpacked there. That it's it's a scene, so you need to actually get out there and get known, and actually keep. Keep mm. true to your art. So we do we have a question mm. here? Thanks to all the great session. But um, if we have any more questions, uh, please, please actually uh, <clears throat> type them in. Give us a like. Please share it around. So it's about 3 a.m. usually. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so. Yes, we know who that is. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Okay. We, a- so we, actually that- sang, we actually sang at Kenmore Park Music Muster last year the song Four in the Morning. At four in the morning. Four in the morning. <laughs> yes. And Breezy and Glenn were instigators of this. I was four a backstage in... artist, so yeah. And, and I got into and I got into a fair bit of trouble by one of me, <laughs> me right hand men, me one of me main volunteers, and a poor bugger. He'd had he'd had the flu needle, oh. and he, I reckon. If that's what the flu needle does to you, I, I wouldn't have it. I reckon he was really dying. And the, one, and the, one, that, the <laughs> one that's commenting, Mr. Lock Mackay, he was one of the big instigators yeah, as well. Yeah, so, he, he was yeah. he was in on it too. But anyway, <laughs> it was all fun and games. It was all good. You, you've got to you've got to be here to enjoy, Terry. You'll you'll get the opportunity, mate. You'll you'll be here, yeah, and I hopefully will. Anthony will come up too. And yes, yeah. yeah Breezy, he knows what it's about. Yeah. And um, Brazy does good. sound for me up here too, Dougie. By the way, well, okay, cool, man. So, yeah, yeah, okay, we'll yeah. actually meet you all in person. And, and this is I, sorry, you go. Yeah, I must say, Anthony, he does a great Terry. sound, mate. Yeah, thank you, Terry. Perfect sound, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 thank you. Makes me sound well, we better than what I am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <That's that. laughs> do you actually do things <laughs> with the beer as well? <laughs> Uh, Terry, I'm for, talking about. No, it's Scotch. Terry. It's Scotch. Yeah. Scotch. Scotch. Oh, so, um, a Scotch. Just uh, maybe That's what I'm having now. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. On, yeah. cheers. I need to get him one. <laughs> so maybe yeah, you, uh, can just... what, you can see what's in mine. I can't see what's in Doug's. <laughs> All right. I'm not going to tell you either. <laughs> so, um, uh, maybe just to. Unpack what just happened this year. Maybe we'll just a couple more questions if we got in. Hey, just mute, uh, just mute me out, Doug. I'm, I'm gonna make a scotch. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Okay, so um, if somebody contacts you, and I'm sure you all know they have talent because you know there's some good singers out there. That's true. Uh, so just you know what's happened this year when the government said that all festivals are cancelled, how did that? Maybe just really quickly, how did that actually unfold for you all? Did you have to ring the – like, who did you contact first? Because being a festival organiser, did you have to contact your customers that are bringing the caravans and the artists and the suppliers? Like, was it a big job to unbolt it from the inside? Maybe Vanessa? Well, you know what? I was actually the last muster of this year, so I actually didn't have to contact anybody. <clears throat> we actually got through Maxwell right when this actually hit. So we were so very lucky. Um, and we actually, we, I was down at Maxwell and we were actually thinking, man, we need to scoot home because we're not going to get home because they're going to close the borders. But um, Maxwell went ahead, got through it, had a fantastic time and nothing really has actually changed for Maxwell 
So we're onwards and upwards for next year. So okay, yeah. And yeah. what about? Okay, that's great. And Anthony, did how did, did so you have to? Out of our ten festivals, um, ten ten festivals, yeah, three a country, and the rest are rock and roll. So man, that is amazing. Holy mm. shit! So ten I festivals. Like I do that's love awesome. it. Um, certainly full time, I can tell you that, uh, as well as <laughs> that's performing. Amazing. And, yeah, that's amazing. So, um, so basically, it's all I guess when the government announced it, everyone kind of just knew. Uh, okay. and then Vicky contacted all the artists and did all that work for me. And we actually just, uh, you, we're going to use the same artists and follow them through to next year. Um, we're going to wait till June, July, see what happens, and then we can uh, work from there with all our festivals from June through to November and work out what's happening. Mate, and we'll thank, just thank take you for it. coming on this show, man. That's awesome. Like 10 festivals. Wow. Thank you. That's mind blowing. Wow. And we'll just bring Glenn back, see if he's ready to go. Here we go. You got a drink, mate? There we go. Yeah, mate. Yeah. I'm, I'm, just, uh, I'm just reloaded, mate. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> reloaded. <laughs> so, Terry, did you have to unbolt much this year for your festival? Yes, mate. Yeah, how many uh, fest- I bring over a few. Fair few overseas artists, and I had a chap wow. whose household name Charlie Lansborough. I had him out, and we did Western Australia, uh, Tasmania, couple up here, Twin Towns, and uh, had uh, eighteen shows to go, and it wow. hit, and uh, hit very hard. We had band and sound crew and. Charlie and his wife, I had to put them up for three weeks. Had a wonderful time, but they, they couldn't get back. Uh, wow. But we couldn't do any shows and, uh, you know, cost a little so, bit of uh, heartache. And uh, with the Clarence Valley Festival, we've only decided this week. And uh, Wendy gets in contact with the customers and I've uh, spoke to all the artists and uh, they've all said they expected it. And... Uh, we put them back till next year, but it's still hard, and I haven't got a job in the book. The only one I got is next year at Clarence Valley in twenty one. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I'm amazed. So you actually um, internationally promote artists as well. Yeah, I bring. I, I had t- Charlie Pride and uh, Wow, M- Mary Duff, uh, Isla Lansborough. Um, had name drop. Um, name drop. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Keep going. Jet Williams, Hank Williams' daughter, she was wonderful. Had her out a couple of years ago. Wow. And, uh, yeah, so I do a bit of that and keeps me busy. So, <laughs> so, so as a promoter, when something like this happens with the whole COVID thing, like I guess you're still required to keep your end of the bargain even though you can't actually use oh, the yeah. you know, talent, talent. You've got to make money in it, out of them. Yeah, wow. well, you've, you've got – I had 18 shows to go. You've got uh, – you know, radio ads, paper ads, all the promotion uh, and uh, what goes with it. And then, like, where people would be booking, say you'd ring ahead and there'd be 250 one week and you'd ring 10 days later and it was down to 90 because the people were scared and they didn't go out and get their tickets and, uh, you know, you were losing wow. money all the time. So I was pleased the government stopped it before it got too bad. And uh, Charlie's a wonderful man. He worked in with me and, uh, uh, you know, we got him back to England and we'll do it wow. again sometime. Yeah. That's a – what a story, man. Wow. Oh, yeah. you got accommodation to ring and knowing you've got seven rooms accommodation, sound crews and and that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All the people – yeah, because everyone from the from the, the customer to the, yeah. the, the draw card, there's all these different layers of – Getting the That's job right. done, yeah. Wow. That's right. That's but amazing. Everyone was so good, but everyone expected it. So yep. uh, as I said earlier, I hope it does come back and we we can get back on the road. But what will probably happen, uh, you know, some of the theatres and uh, bigger places, they've cancelled for all this year. There's going to be a team of entertainers looking for the same venue, you know, to perform at when it, when it does come back. Those the touring right. acts. We're right with our festivals. We got them all, all set. But the touring act is going to be a uh, bit, a bit hard. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah. <clears throat> Never it's, mind. I guess, but also too with the age group thing, because, well, from the news that I've been reading is that, 
you know, they might let the rest of Australia up to 60 or something go and dip, go about their normal business first before they relax to, I don't know, yeah. they're going to uh, sort of gradually release, you know, the thing. Yeah, well, some of the older of the people group. that we get at the festivals, then they'll probably be a bit scared of going, being amongst right. crowds and then, uh, so, uh, yeah, all that. Fear yeah. factor. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Okay. We've just got to wait and see. And we got we'll Mr. Blue. One another, help one another if we can. So, yeah, well said. That's well great said. We're all all here together. Yes. And we yeah. have uh, Mr. Blue Rinse here. Oh, well, I uh, missed his comment. It's gone. <laughs> He's there in the go. middle now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, how, how did um, unbolting some of the festivals happen for you, Rob? Um, it was fairly slow, Doug, it, it, but we knew it was going to happen. And, and as Terry just said, he can his only just last week but oh, wow. all the festival organizers have done a terrific job they really really have um but in saying that I, I we've all left it to the last possible minute so we can't see a point of any return um which well has probably been a good thing because none of us knew how long this was going to go for or, and still to this point we really are unsure as to what's going to happen this year and even next year um, yeah we're all hoping for the best um, but it, it, it's been a task and a half, um, and just it's just devastating from an organizer's point of view to say, Oh, well, there goes every cent that I'm going to attempt to make, um, this year. Basically, wow. um, end of deal, yeah, yep. yeah, that's, that's pretty hard no government assistance for us guys because you're all privateers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So we're not yeah. we're not employed, yes. right? Because, right? Because if you're running an event, it's <coughs> based on the uh, execution of the event that you'll get paid. That's yeah. right. Exactly. And but the promoters are hit hardest because you have to put the money up to secure the That's venue, right. secure yep. all the other. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Well, That's yeah. amazing. It's a point of no return. Yeah. I mean, there's not there's That's no right. comeback. There's yeah. no venue going to say, "All right, you can have next year for free." Um, That's right. Rob. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Oh Except wow, that's square man in in town. <laughs> yeah, we'll go there for a meal. <laughs> <laughs> Support you. He <laughs> cooks a good feed too, Terry. Terry. I know. What, yeah. What's what's your yeah. what's your restaurant called in Tamworth? What's it called? It's, it's called the square, the square Man, man in. in, Doug. The Square Man, the square man in. in. <laughs> I'm going to come to Tamworth and I want to come to your restaurant. That's cool, man. Yeah, do that. Do that. Do, yeah. make, it, make it really quick, mate. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's no restaurant in a couple of weeks. You wouldn't know. Oh. No. Yes. Yeah. Well, are you doing like takeaways no, at the moment? Not. Like cooking yeah. food and all that? Yeah, we're doing, so we're yeah, doing but takeaways. He, but... he won't do home deliveries to Victoria, but. Yeah. <laughs> you won't even bring him to Queensland. So. No, oh. I did once. Mid bloody <laughs> ordinary. Oh, yeah, he did. He did. Man, I really hope that you. Um, I really hope from this show too that people come and support you. How do they? How do they support you? Do they have you got a website or a phone number or something? Or oh, look, yeah, we've got a website and we've got a Facebook page and we're we're doing all that. <coughs> um, but the whole government has said to everybody, don't go anywhere. Mm. Um, and the majority of people have been really good and, and done what the government has said. Right. So, okay. you know, and we're all in the same boat, the whole lot. No matter yep. what sort of business you're running, I think you, we've all copped it from one yep. point to the other. Wow. Well said, man. I hope that, mm. yeah, well, I'd like yeah. to go to Tamworth. <laughs> When I actually, uh, I actually did a gig at Tamworth. Uh, I, you, I don't know if you guys have heard of the Seals family. You know the Seals family, no? Um, anyway, I got to do a gig. I've got, I've got, got a friend to... who's a, his name was Gary Salmon. Uh, <laughs> close, but no not relation close to Dan. <laughs> no relation to Dan have... Seals. He played a bass. And, and... <laughs> <laughs> and I was going to say I may have locked up some slippery seals, but no. Uh, uh, I don't think uh, you knew, uh, but yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So um, I actually, yeah, well said, Rob. There you go. The um, I did a gig at Lowe's in um, yep. on the main drag. There it was really weird. So I got to do a set, and um, I was there just like Terry with my thongs on, and I've got a moon tan. So when I don't have a torch, I can take some clothing off and uh, 
<laughs> just light the place up. Anyway, all these people were gathering. I was like, this is sick. You know, in Tamworth, first time we're going to do a gig. This is going to be awesome. All they were doing was stopping and taking photos of my white albino feet and thongs. Like, <laughs> they didn't care. I was like carving up the fretboard because I forgot to put the shoes in the car, didn't I? It was at the hotel. <laughs> and, you know, I, yeah, anyway, spinal tap moment. And I couldn't. Oh. It was too hard to get go back because you got to go through all these checking things. Anyway, it happened. Uh, square man in. There we go. Someone's got square man in at Tamwood has great food. There we go. Yeah. So over he to – over to – there we go. The, everyone's supporting you there, sir. Um, so, John Glenn. Lynch. Yeah, yeah, that's John Lynch, yes. Yep. So, yep. over, to, over hey, to Glenn. Um, so, with the whole COVID thing setting in, how did you have to – did you have to unbolt your festival and was that a pretty messy process? No. Look, as far as un, un, unbolting, um, like Rob, like we left ours because our festival is – um, is an outdoor festival. So the restrictions for the outdoor uh, side of it were yep. they were a bit more lenient than, than a lot of the, you know, in, un, enclosed um, festivals. And, and I, I let, let it run as long as I possibly could because we did Maxville uh, down there with Vanessa when it all kicked in and ours was due to run in, in early June. And I thought, well, we've got a little bit of time, so we'll just let this run and see, you know, uh, no one really knew how far or how long this was going to go on for or whatever. So we we left it run till, well, basically as long as we possibly could. Um, as far as we, we run a, like I said, you know, there's only Vanessa and I and, and probably – four or five other people that we actually run the main guts, if you like, of this show here. Right. Um, we've got, yep. um, I've, I've got, you know, guys that, that that are contracted to do the toilets and whatever. But, I mean, basically I spent, well, really in a nutshell, mate, I spent probably four hours on the phone um, and I'd canned all the artists um uh, band um you know Vanessa had, had got in contact with food vendors and whatever that, that we'd had here and it was done but I mean yeah it, it it is a big you know it definitely is a big kick in the guts this year because I'm like I'm self-employed as well I've, I've got a truck um right and with all you know I've done bloody nothing really this year so to speak so it's yeah it's um no it, it's you know it, it's but it was not only as i said like like breezy's industry uh our industry yep. a, a lot of industries you know like i know um you know everybody associated with with it doesn't have to be just just the music scene but you know you, you take your pubs and your clubs and and different things like it's, it's affected everybody across the board in a, in a big way yep. you know and i i don't know I don't know, you know. I, I hope it. I hope it gets back to where it, you know, where it should be. Whatever. The, probably the biggest thing that that frightens me, if I can say this, and this is probably speaking a little bit out of turn. Right. Uh, right. What what frightens me a little bit, probably not so much, probably not so much from the festival point of view, but but from um, local gigs and and band and, and duo stuff like Vanessa yep. and I both work with the band and we do a duo thing and Vanessa does a solo thing um, it's always been a pretty uh, cutthroat game um, and what worries me is when these restrictions get lifted is that people don't value their own ability and their right. own um, I don't know how do I word it? Uh, their, their own, um, you know, yeah. How good, how how good they actually are, and go right, and cut okay. the guts out of it to go and go and do it for nothing. That that's like okay. Oh, I know everybody's suffering, but yeah. everybody's got to live mm. too, you know. Mm. Right. If okay. that makes so, sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be an undercut frenzy. 
Yeah, just exactly. keep getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and then and it'll, that- it'll happen. There's no doubt in my mind that, that, that it will happen, you know? Yeah. And I just want to say uh, great discussions all involved. I Please keep putting all these towns up. This is just amazing. Like this little thing here is being broadcast to over half the country. We've got everyone from down in Melbourne all the way up at North Queensland. This is just this is just amazing. So, um, but I, I've got Doug, maybe two I... questions. Yeah, you go. Yeah, you're right. Yep. No, you're right. No, you're right. You keep going, mate. You're right. Uh, I was just going to say that, um, oh, yeah, that's one big problem is going to be the insurance of mass gatherings because, you know, uh, that's a good question, actually. Uh, who's that from, Robert? Are they going to make ha- catching a virus a risk that you have to get insurance for? That would be crazy. Mm. Yeah. Is that, in the, is that in the fine print? Mm. Exactly. I don't know, but um, yeah, there you go. Insurance but maybe, um, wipe their hands. what's that? Sorry, sorry, Brazy. Insurance companies just wipe their hands of any pandemic whatsoever. The mm. minute they called it a pandemic, it was a insurance company write off. Yeah, right. Okay. It's it, in my one of my insurance policies for my motorcycle. I got an update and said, uh, any any act of God you're not insured for. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> It's like so I stopped sneezing on my motorbike, but anyway, that's cool. But um, thank, thanks, thank you, Chris. So maybe, um, uh, maybe two more questions. And so, the future looking up, if everything goes back, and we we get to have this on, are you going to um, do anything different? So, what are some of the maybe um, benchmark or maybe the little goals that you have that you want to do different? You know, to make your little festival. Well, in, I know in Anthony's case, he runs 10 festivals, which is a salute to you, sir. Man, that is just insane. Um, so you'll be really good to answer this one. So what would you like to do next for your festival then, Vanessa? Look, I, I'm going to push forward with Maxwell like I actually did this year and I'm going to put it out there to say that if you people support it, it will happen. It was a great time. We had an old-time dance to kick it off on the Tuesday night. We had Wednesday night, um, the walk-ups were at one of the local clubs. So so we all bust them out to one of the local clubs and they had meals and stuff out there, all the campers. Thursday night, we had main stage artists at the RSL club, just a free two-hour acoustic show. Then Friday, we kicked off the main stage. Saturday, we had a family fun day. Sunday was gospel. I don't think we're going to do anything different (laughs) next year. So I just think That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it was really good. But I, I will push to say that if it if I don't get the numbers, I'm going to cancel it because I can't take the risk. I can't take the risk of having the financial burden on me because I don't have a backing. If you want to see these people, you need to get off your bums, you need to purchase the tickets and you need to get out there and support these artists because we're all supporting you. We're doing live shows from home for free at the moment you know, to keep you guys happy, to keep you guys going. So when we come yeah. back, get out there and just support it. That's that's just my, right. my opinion. So you, you need yeah. bums on seats and thongs. Bums I mean, on, on your feet, in your feet. Oh, yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> I got the thongs. Doug, you can have and bums and thongs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's oh, all. Goodness. So over oh, to crazy. over to Anthony, I know, I guess – as I just said before, you're running tense festivals, so you must be a, a magician at uh, running festivals and keep shifting and adjusting and connecting with specific um, clients, right? Because you said you've got three country festivals and seven rock and roll festivals. Yep. So, so, yeah. so what I've done is created a Facebook for, uh, page for each each festival. Um, so whoever's interested in that particular festival will like the page. And then there's our master page or mother page called Festivals on the Murray, which is uh, Facebook and on the web. So that way they can keep uh, in touch with everything. But to improve, we might take out some of Vanessa's ideas and run a family <laughs> event on the Saturday, which is great. Um, we normally start. <laughs> we go normally for start. It, go for it. <laughs> thank you. We normally start Thursday night, so we could do a, a walk up Wednesday, um, get people in a little bit earlier. So maybe introducing some new things like that thanks vanessa okay. for sharing that that's great oh good hey look, it's about getting everybody involved you know yep. that's my True. thing is just hey, Anthony. There. 
Yeah. I Anthony. <laughs> yes. I Anthony. What you need to mate is to in- introduce the pony hops. Oh no! <laughs> because I can no, say no, no, that no, Rob Breeze and I, Rob Breeze and I, <laughs> were the champions at Maxville. We <laughs> rode the ponies, <laughs> didn't we, Rob? <laughs> oh dear. And Vanessa, just show your prize. The, the wooden spoon. Hang on, and, hang on, let me, let me uh, zoom and Doug, in. If you, Doug, hone in on that. I wrote on that. See that, Vanessa, fourth place yeah, I was in last. brackets I last. Doug, I'd cop that much. I'd cop that much over this pony hop, and I, I was determined. <laughs> like Breezy and I teamed up, and I was determined we weren't going to be beaten. And you we weren't. Watch the video on. <laughs> Well, go back well, to uh, Natural Music Master and watch the video. It's funny. Well, it's like, funny. I must no, be. No, 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 no. I don't know. Yes, it was, yes. For those people at home, I don't even know what a pony hop is. It's a blow Mate, up. It's a blow up racehorse. <laughs> like, and you oh. bounce a bouncer log on it. I couldn't get the thing to bounce. Seriously, I couldn't get it to That's bounce. Surprising. Right? <laughs> That's why you come no for. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. We got it to bounce, didn't we, Breezy? Didn't we ever? <laughs> Breezy, oh. had, Breezy had the best stack. It was just unbelievable. <laughs> and it's on Facebook. It's on Facebook. <laughs> so if we go no, to... No, we did uh, not, Anne, go at all. <laughs> we, never, we never cheated at all. So there's another so, idea for you, Anthony. Pony yep. hops. Look up oh, pony I'll hops. I'll take that on board. Thank you. <laughs> the, um, the other thing I would, uh, Anthony, too, do you listen much to your... Uh, audience that comes along. Do you have like a um, a feedback situation, or just on Facebook, or yeah, are you definitely. in contact with your a festival? lot of them? Will will come during the you know the course of the festival and just um, come for a few minutes, have a chat, let them know what they think. They'll drop me a, a private message. Uh, but quite often, everyone's happy the way it runs. It's very smooth. They got plenty of um, dancing time. Great variety of artists. Yeah. So um, I think it's, um, yeah. Oh, very good. That's good. Okay. Well, then over to Terry, who's uh, seen it all from the beginning of Tamworth. How do you, yeah, what mate. do you do to uh, improve your Next year's. your festival? Well, it's the same acts, uh, only we want it to be bigger and better, and we'll celebrate getting over all this hassle that we've had for the last 12 months. So uh, yep. it'll be, uh, it's from the 25th of October to the 31st and um, Jade Hurley's the main act and then we have a whole heap of other acts and uh, uh, for a week it runs, uh, we have walk-ups just like Glenn and uh, Vanessa and Rob's festivals and then on the Friday, Saturday, Sunday uh, and then through the week, it's the daytime, the walk-ups, but we have a little stage called the Tex Morton stage at night. And yeah, they wow. all bring their little wines and their chairs and sit down, and uh, yeah. it's a solo performance. And uh, Gee, that sounds and like a night down. for us, Terry. Beg your pardon, mate. That that sounds like a night for me down there. It, it, it is, mate. And, and then behind, while they're performing, we have a little scotch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely got to get in there. It's a date, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we hope everyone has good health and this. Uh, complaint goes and yep. uh, we all get together and start a brand new party totally yeah, totally so. and um yeah. just finishing yeah. off this question uh rob uh what do you do to improve so i know we've just been talking about musical acts but like even back of house improvements how to do the things bigger and better and maybe if i expand this just simple things like food vans or whatever running like a ticket system. So while they're in line, they have someone selling the tickets, dealing with the money. So by the time they get to get the food, they just swap. There's less time at the till, so to speak. But, you know, maybe you're not into those kind of things. I'm not sure. But just interested in how do you improve a festival, just the experience for everybody. Yeah, look, I'm not sure about the food van thing. Um, most of the festivals that I'm involved with uh, are sort of low key um, and Everybody, you know, as we all know, everybody goes to the food van at, at quarter to six for dinner. Same time. Um, so, and it's got to be cooked ready for them. And and, and I'm, in, I'm, I'm in that industry most of the time myself. 
So you've got you you can't be overcooking and you can't be undercooking and how do you know? So the whole process does take a bit of time to get it right. Um, obviously, you can be half a dozen steak sandwiches ahead of yourself and that sort of stuff. Um, in, in that situation, you know, you can be. But yeah, what I take my hat off to those guys that are doing festival food vans. Um, how do they know? How do they know? And they don't, do they? Like one night where no one goes to them at all. So, yeah. so the next night, they don't prepare anything, then they get flogged. So mm. it, it, right. it's a hard one. It's really, really hard when it comes to that. Nobody ever books in and says, I'll be there for, for dinner. <laughs> 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 it doesn't quite happen like that. Fair enough, fair enough. As far, as far as the festivals that I'm involved, the music, music side of it, um, look, I'm just going to keep doing what I do because that's what I do. Um, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I, the minute, the minute it, I'm not cutting it, I'm hoping I will be the first one to know. Well said. Well so said, yeah. I hope I'm switched on enough to know that. Yeah, that's, that's really, really well said there. And maybe, uh, Glenn? Just to wrap up the second last question, I've got one more question and we'll be done. Yeah, look, I think I think as far as like the food van thing, we try and I try and have a, a variety of food vans here. Um, not not a not a great heap. I, I try to look at uh, their point of view as well. You know, <laughs> you can have you can have 10, 10 food vans here, but yeah. The, the, the crowd that we deal with, there's a lot of them that will bring their own food and they'll cook their own food. Then they'll go and support a food van. As Rob said, one night they'll, they won't have anybody and the next night they'll flog a food van, you know, like that, <laughs> that they've, had, they've got nothing cooked. So, so you don't, yeah. you don't know. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't have a lot of food vans. I try and have a variety uh, a small variety, so they're all getting something out of it, um, yep. and and then they want to come back too, which which yep. keeps it local, community minded, um, non for profit. Like they're getting, you know, Lions uh, Variety Club, you know, blah blah. They're getting something out of it as well. So um, yeah, well said. Yeah, yeah, and the the only reason I say that is, I actually play lots of festivals, local festivals, big festivals, whatever, but. I just see that hole in the situation where someone will get a great product and it'll taste amazing, but it's just mm. the um, the delivery mechanism needs to be tuned. And mm. and I don't blame them because it's all impact. They go, oh, my God, well, who am I going to hire? I'm going to hire this, you know, these young people who do it for me, but they might not be across having a process. That's And then what will happen, because I've been in line in – I'll just go to the one with the uh, shorter line because I have yeah. a, ne a need to get food now. <laughs> but anyway, is no, what it is. Exactly right, Doug. And, and, and I know I've worked festivals, as we probably all have. I've worked festivals where there's been a huge, um, like, you know, uh, uh, 700 bands, <laughs> 800 bands, and they yeah. won't, you know, and, and the, the actual – because it's all run by volunteers for, for the for a particular committee, yeah, and it'll be shut, and they'll only open between, you know, say like, you know, they'll, they'll do the breakfast thing from from six o'clock till nine o'clock, and then they'll shut yeah. from, and they'll only open from twelve till two, yeah. and you've got to line up from here to bloody, <laughs> you know, and if if they yeah. kept that open all day, <laughs> people yeah. could just dribble in and, and feed. And I get that from the volunteer side of it. You know, someone's got to be there. But it's um, like here, you know, they're on site and they're there from from go to yo. So, I mean, there's not really that huge influx where yep. they're going to get hammered because they can all sneak up. They want a cup of chips or they want a hot dog or a steak burger or whatever, you know, fish and chips, whatever. Yep. Okay, cool. Maybe the last last question then is, um, what's your definition of a successful festival? So it might not be. Let's not. Let's just exclude money because I know that. that, that <laughs> may, but you know, but I'm looking for the the deeper thing. You know, like what? 
you know, maybe it's that one person that comes up and says something. Maybe it's you, you, you actually observe something that you haven't seen before or something. So, yeah, just that one. And, yeah, so what makes it successful for you and what's a piece of advice for um, the musicians coming in, you know, new musos, you know. So maybe, Vanessa, you want to go first? The most successful, well, the most thing that I think is a successful thing is this. If you see people smiling, if you see yeah, let me people zoom having in. There we go. fun like this and they're having fun, <laughs> they're dancing and they go away and then they send you feedback and say how good it was, that makes it a success. For me, um, I, that's, that's what I'm all about is putting smiles on people's faces and well I, said. Love seeing, I love seeing people have fun and I love to have fun, um, you know, after being <laughs> You know, out of uniform and in uniform. No, 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 no. no. All right, okay. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> have to wear the police uniform. Yeah, yeah that's what, I've still got them, you know. I've still got them. Oh, wow. Okay there, so, yeah, yeah. Are you still got the handcuffs? No, no. <laughs> 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 you, you say that. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, dear. Maybe You're in the big tough now, Doug. Maybe yep. fluffy yeah. ones, but no, not the real ones. All right. No, but no. <laughs> Now it's getting bad, I tell you. Okay, ah, so uh, some advice so for an up-and-coming musician. Make people smile. If you can make people smile <laughs> and make people have fun, Too much all good. All good. Yes. <laughs> Too much information, yeah. No, uh, like, yeah, make people smile. That's that's good. That's good. So what about um, Anthony? So mm. what's – yeah. <laughs> Well, the two two guys. What's the most? What, what makes you happy, and what you know, about having a festival? Because you obviously do that very regularly. And then, um, yeah, and the, some yeah. words of advice for a muso. So it's really nice when there's no complaints, um, and you're kind of feeling right. This is okay, and it's even better when you get the private messages and the emails, and um, you know, from the clubs and from the followers saying how, and, and when the artists actually reply and say, thank you for having me um, yeah. on your festival, that's really nice and, and great mannerism and, um, yeah, so that's really good. Hmm. And, and I guess through all your festivals, have you had some aspiring rock star who's just crushed it and gone above and beyond on the bills of your festivals? There's always someone that's quite good and, you know, within three years they've moved on and, um They've, they've done really well, you know, whether they've taken a slightly different path with songwriting or building a home studio or teaching or anything, yeah. So, and no, you're not going to name drop any anyone we should look out for? Oh, not at the moment. <laughs> okay, fair think. enough. That's cool. Okay, you so can... over, uh, over to and Terry. Some advice, some advice oh. sorry, for the younger ones is um, try to come prepared on stage. Try not to bring your lyrics on stage. You know, try and, uh, like Vanessa said, smile. Um, have have your charts ready. Um, have your keys ready and just enjoy the moment and go for it. Yeah. yeah. And actually, when you have a backing band like that, who counts it in? Does the, the uh, artist count it in or the drummer? Uh, normally Rob on guitar, I think. Is that right, Rob? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep, the guitarist. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, well, well said, man. That's really, really Good, cool. Right. So over, to, over to Terry with all your uh, wisdom. Yeah, mate. Well, flight. probably the best thing is um, uh, we usually get them if they want to come back next year. They book their uh, same site, so it's nice to see a nice queue up, booking, paying that deposit for the next year, and uh, smiling faces, and for the young new ones that are starting. Do the best you can and don't get a big head. Mm. I, I right. Think yeah. That's, yeah. And uh, listen to the older ones and do as much work as you can, whether you get paid or for naught, just uh, be there and see what happens at the end. Yeah, so, uh, that's, I think. that's good. That's good. And are you still getting uh, royalties from your record sales? What's royalties? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you did have your own TV show, right? So very well said. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to actually watch some of your reruns of your TV show. Cool, I may have to say, Doug, you do a great job 
and what this is the first time I've been on this, but hasn't he folk all us to guess? Yeah. No, you're, Absolutely. You're, a, yes. you're a great host. Yep. That, yep. That's you, what sir. I was actually going to yeah, say. Perfect. That's what I was going to say before there, Terry. I, yeah, mate. Yeah, Doug, we all he, think he's the same. done a, Yeah, he's, he, he did a great. I watched him lie the other night with uh, Vanessa and, and, the, and the girls, and I was really enjoyed. Just the yeah, uh, just the, nice. just the whole thing, and and now I, you've you've done a great job, mate. It, it's it's Thank you, sir. I'm really really happy to you know to to be out, and it's good not only with what you've done, but with Anthony and and uh, and Terry and Breezy and yeah. Vanessa. Like it's good just to sit and chat and get all different perspectives uh, perspectives of different festivals and and all that sort of caper, you know. So one of these festivals, no, I reckon Thank, you've done a great you. job, mate. Thank you for saying because I was going to ask uh, Terry at the end uh, any any you know talk show things because you guys haven't seen you only know me as a talk show host not a a guitar player so Terry I'm in or actually all of you if you check out my guitar playing videos um, right I'd we, love, we love watch, to hear we, Glenn and I watch you live on the the public no fear so do you want oh, a job awesome. playing do you want a job yeah. playing lead guitar at Kenmore Park that'll take the pressure <laughs> off me a bit yeah sure mate yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, there's some videos of uh, me the playing. The pay's not real good. Cool. Because I yeah, work no. for nothing. Fair enough, mate. I'll give it a go. I'll give it a go. As long as you don't mind somewhere. a little bit. Of, as long as you don't mind a little bit of shredding, because um, I guess so for all of you who don't know if I'm name dropping now, I was just in the States and I got to play in front of um, Tom Morello from Rage Against the Machine and uh, Nuno Betancourt from Extreme and Vernon Reed and John from Living Colour. I don't know if you know these bands and uh, John Five from Mel and Manson, and they were all like blown out of all these like you know guitar tricks and anyway. Yeah, you, some you, English haven't, you haven't worked in, with Michelle Rose yet. All right, okay. <laughs> but anyway, I know I'm, I'm name dropping, but yeah, please look check it out. But anyway, enough about me. Uh, over to Rob, who's a real muse. So I just googled you too, Rob. You're a legend <laughs> and a restaurant guy. So no, I'm not. What? It's all, it's all good. Mate, um, the kids know. As Terry said, I, I worked a festival um, February, March last year, and we all hung around for 24 hours after the festival finished. And, and, the, and the operator, or the guy that was running the festival, came up and said, "Of the 300 and so vans that we've we had here this weekend, we've got deposits for 150 of them already for next year." So wow, wow, great. I, I, I think that. That sells itself, you know. Um, yep. yep. The audience is happy. They want to come back. Um, there's certainly a market out there for, for this sort of thing. Um, it's kind of a shame that – well, not, not really a shame, but it, it's kind of a, a situation where Australia is such a huge country. Um, yep. And all these festivals generally happen pretty close to the coast. Um so there's a lot of lot of similar people going to a lot of different festivals all the time, which is great. Um, I, I know some yep. people that just festival hop, um, mm. and there's a lot of people yep. that actually do that. Yeah, Terry, you'd there is. know the same, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah, mate. Yeah. Right yeah. Down there, Murray River. You've seen it one. Glenn, that, yeah. you see the same yep. places. At a lot yeah, they go from one to the yeah. other. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah, right. They do. Um, yeah. And we're we're always grateful to see new faces. But it's there's something there's something else to see in an old face come back again. Yeah, you know. But not, well not said. An old face, but it, or you mean a blue rinse face? Or <laughs> <laughs> you, look, you you know things are right when people are returning to the festivals, no matter what they are. Um, Absolutely, we, we all the whole lot of us sell our souls to make sure things are right on the night. Yep. Yeah, regardless of all the stuff yeah. we go through mm. to 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 get there um that's we all i think that, that's what we do that that's what we do we sell our souls to make sure it's right yeah i think what what you're talking about there is uh Good, Rob. You, when you have to do something being disciplined it comes from like oh negative space but if you do it from passion you get all this same energy as i said on the show the other night what keeps you up at night you know you go oh well i might buy this on ebay and go read all these reviews yeah Blah blah blah. Yeah. But well, yep. well said, Rob. That's awesome. Well, actually, you know, someone I, just I, typed that. Yeah, cool. I've 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 worked with some artists over the years, and I'm not going to drop names at all. Um, and you can feel on stage where they they're just going down like a lead balloon, 
They're not connecting with the audience. And, and you get oh, geez, you didn't have to drop that, Rob. <laughs> you know, but you know how it is. Um, yeah. You've been there, Glenn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and we all. Yeah, we all have. Um, yeah. You can feel it happening. You can feel it happening. And the artist simply says, well, if they don't like it too bad, this is what I do. Yeah. Um, you're there for the, the crowd, aren't you? You want to give to the younger mm, people. Yeah. That are having to go. Don't don't end up in that situation. No. Because your careers will be really short lived. Yep. Yep. But yeah. Because me. No, no, that's good. And Glenn, last lucky last, sure. Glenn. <clears throat> Look, I, I agree with Rob there a hundred percent. Excuse me. With with what he just said. Um you know. Your crowd is everything at these festivals. Without your crowd, you've got nothing. Mm. Yep. Um, you know, the organisation, uh, the work that goes in, into these things, going back to the festival thing, I know here just personally myself, and I don't know, it seems to happen to me um, on this little block here that I've got a, a few cattle here. Um, and, and every time there seems to be, we, we run a festival or whatever, there's cattle get out and I've got to go and fix fences at five o'clock in the morning and get cattle back and all this. It never happens any other time of the year, but it seems <laughs> to happen when the festival's on. Um, and, you know, you, I, I find myself down the paddock. I oh, know there was cattle got out here. Uh, With your years, on, mate. Busy, wasn't it? He probably should have his thongs on, yeah. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> And, you know, I had to hook the, the portable ramp up here. The, the guy wanted to bring it back and unload them in the yards here. And I said, well, you really can't because I've got caravans and food vans and everything, so I'm going to have to tow your portable ramp down the paddock to where they were locked in, and you're going to have to unload them there. You know, like all, all these sort of things that people don't see, they're just little things that, that go on. It only happens when we're going to run a festival. That doesn't right. happen any yes. other time. But yeah. I, I think, yeah, on the whole, is is be true to yourself. Um, be true to the people that support you, your, your caravanners, your grey nomads, the people that support you online, whatever. As Terry said, new and upcoming artists are coming through that want to get out there and have a go, do the right thing. Listen to people that have got um, experience in the game yep. and don't let it go to your head. Yeah, yep. I like that last point, yeah. Yep. Well, I just want to say thank you to all. And uh, I only anticipated 90 minutes, but we've blown that out to nearly 180. So, um, <laughs> no, it's <obviously> great. <laughs> so, anyway, rock and roll. But Enjoy thank you it. all for your time. This is a really great insight. Yeah, and um, I'm and amazed. I hope we can do it again. Yeah, that'd be yeah. cool. Yeah, if you're all on board for that, I really enjoyed yeah. all your insight and your great mate. Resp- yep. Thank you, Terry. That means a lot coming from you. A Google deal was like, oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> seriously. It's, maybe hope you don't want to bite me. me. <laughs> What's that? Sorry. <laughs> I said, I hope you don't want to bite me. I got nothing. No, 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 no. <laughs> no I, I'm actually tipping my hat to you, sir, because I, I seriously looked you up. as like, wow, there's some serious street cred going on there. And same as well, actually all of you and in Anthony, uh, like ten festivals. Holy crap! Sorry. What was that? Sorry. No, all good. Have I lost you? Yep. I know. No, you're alive. All good. No, yep. All good. Yep. I, Thought it was a digital glitch. Okay, someone's yeah, saying here, Wendy's. Extra- Wendy's. Cool. So if everyone waves on cue, but don't hang up just yet, we'll just wave. Everyone wave, but don't hang up. And but but great oh, to talk cool. to all, all, all you guys, Doug and and Anthony. I haven't met you yeah. personally, mate, till Thanks, tonight. Glenn. Great to have nice you. And Terry in, and uh, yeah, and Breezy. Good, Glenn. Yeah. Anthony. Yeah. Great to catch Terry. up with you guys. Nice Thank eh? you. Doug, yeah. Thank Thank you. Good. I really enjoyed the night. Thank you. And uh, but don't hang up. I'll just pull you from the feed. But don't hang up. Here we go. And pull you from the feed. So thank you very much for watching and staying in for the long innings because this is way longer than I anticipated. And uh, oh, thank you, Vicky. There we go. And oh, we got one more comment down here. Please like and subscribe. I actually have a YouTube channel 
that I would like to get up to a thousand subscribers. So if you know someone who would like to get on it, please let me know. If you know anyone else who has something amazing happening in this world, I'd love to know about it and share it to the world. So have a good night. And